field of Philadelphia as the state's two NFL teams go head to head. Mr. Fetterman, Steelers or Eagles, and why? <laughs> oh, clearly, always for the Steelers. Mr. Oz, I'll be at the game rooting for my Eagles. Fly. You don't. You don't fucking live in Pennsylvania. So much. This does conclude our debate. We Is do it your team, the Giants, team. motherfucker? Mr. Fetterman and Mr. Oz, and for all of you at home who have been watching, thank you so much. And we want to thank our team at W. So that is the Pennsylvania Senate debate between John Fetterman and Dr. Bachmet Oz, or uh, Doc Ock, as some people like to call him. If any of you are new here, my name is Justin Freegan. I do a uh, nightly news show. We're Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. I can sum up my political beliefs in one phrase. I would give anything, anything in the world, to piss in Dan Crenshaw's open eye hole. John Fetterman looks incredibly uncomfortable right now. The feed from the TV station was horrendous. I apologize for their audio. I apologize for... I don't even know what happened when their feed started buffering and then that's when the audio dropped. I have no clue about any of the sporty balls. What I do have a clue about is that when we come back, we can either do the news or we can do the Holchul Lee Zeldin debate in New York, if you would like that. I believe I'm on the side of doing the Holchul Lee Zeldin debate in New York. Holchul, the current... Uh, governor of New York, who took over for Andrew Cuomo after his uh, drama. Mock says the news. What do you want to talk about, Nine Tells? I don't have the phone lines open. I do have news prepared. If you guys would like a news show, we can do a news show. What do we have on the news for tonight? Oh, we got a new prime minister over in Britain. We're going to hear his speech from this morning. Dirty bomb accusations. Apparently, Ukraine is accusing Russia of doing some uh, untaught. Is that the word I'm looking for? Untaught. Business at a nuclear plant. The progressives in Congress were bullied to withdraw a letter that they sent to Biden over uh, Ukraine and wanting more diplomacy with Russia on the issue. We're going to hear from the Secretary of Education about student test scores during the pandemic. The Alaska GOP censured Mitch McConnell over his support for Republican senator from Alaska. Uh, 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 fucking, what is her name? I'm, I'm fucking not here on my notes. God damn it. My stoner ass can't remember. Murkowski, Lisa Murkowski. Seriously, I may have a tumor or something. I've been drawing blanks. I've been having headaches lately. Or I could just be tired and stressed. Same symptoms for both. Harris Faulkner on Fox News was shown a poll. I believe it had to do with uh, John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. And after seeing the poll, minutes later disputed what she saw in that poll. Slavery is on the ballot in five states. We're going to hear from Latino voters on Fox News about the scary Biden policies. We did the story about the armed men watching drop boxes in Arizona. Last night, uh, I guess about the same time CNN was dropping uh, some fire footage of this woman confronting armed men at drop boxes. We're going to watch that. There is going to be a protest ban at the University of Florida over how rowdy the students got over uh, soon-to-be former Republican Senator Ben Sass. Going to be taking over as the president of the University of Florida. 
An Oklahoma superintendent candidate wants a patriotic Christian re-education for the students, which is fucking scary. Candace Owens is going to give us her opinion on Taylor Swift. And, uh... Apparently, Kanye is making it even worse. And when when I say he's making it even worse, I'm talking about something that just dropped in the last few hours. So maybe maybe you've heard this one. Maybe you maybe you haven't. Yeah, Oz just jumped ten points after the debate. <laughs> Fucking shit. Oh fuck. So I don't I don't know. We gonna we gonna smoke some untoward. Yes to porn. I like porn too. You live in sexual anarchy. Laying pipe isn't bad. I love how right wingers just pull shit out their fucking ass. More Kanye shit. Yes, apparently he said uh, him mentioning uh, Jewish people and the backlash that he got from it is proof that he was right. I can't show porn on the Twitch. But I have been thinking about this. I've really wanted to find like a partner in crime I can go into and do a show that's like maybe OnlyFans, maybe it's on Pornhub or something. Maybe maybe it's a full stream on OnlyFans and I cut it up and I put it uh, on the Pornhub as clips. But it would be kind of like a Troll Patrol-like show only we're watching amateur porn clips. And, and commenting on it. Girl of the Gray, you just missed it. You just missed the Fetterman Oz debate. We were just talking about whether we're going to come back and watch a replay of the Holchul Lee Zeldin debate in New York. So I do. Do I need to put a poll up for that? Hold on, Twitch people. I'm putting a poll up for you. What the, the, apparently the the last poll was do you like commentary? I don't know what the fuck that was. I don't even know how to spell Holchul. I got it right. God damn, look at me. I'm amazed. Uh, just so Warlord can't fucking... <laughs> oh, shit. I gotta, I gotta change the additional vote thing here. Just so Warlord can't, uh, skew the content does not meet guidelines. Ah. Apparently, you can't put, uh, profanity... In polls. Poll created. You got three minutes to vote. We doing debate. We doing news. Whoa. What what, what went happened? Who, who got deleted by moderator? Oh, Vampire Hunter got, got booted. Adam exercising his power. I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of for the Holchul Zeldin debate. Apparently that one has gotten close. That there is a good chance that Lee Zeldin wins in New York. It is New York State it's for the governorship. 
I just into, I've got some fun news. And I'm not and I'm also not saying and I probably should have said this before the poll. I'm not saying that we wouldn't still do news after the whole Jules Zeldin debate. I I'm not saying I won't still do the show I put together after that debate. <laughs> we'll probably do both. Professor Q, good evening. I I think it's going to be a mixed bag. It's not going to be a red wave per se. I've, it's going to be an odd thing where like Republicans are probably going to take the House and Democrats are going to gain seats in the Senate. So we're going to have an odd moment in governance where the Democrats are going to be able to do certain things like put judges on the court. And then Republicans are just going to cry and whine. The Biden administration is already talking about uh, doing away with the debt ceiling so they're not going to be able to hold the government hostage over some kind of bullshit. Oh, God, somebody's talking about Red 5 Golf. What's up, my friend? Let me explain to you why student loans are bullshit. The baby boomers got the cost of college almost completely covered. The federal government, uh, uh, the the state governments covered 65 to 95% of the cost of 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 tuition such in California is where they were 95% but states didn't cover less than 65% of the cost of education the federal government would kick in about another 25% on top of that and this is not even going into your minimum wage uh, as a baby boomer was worth a hell of a lot more jobs were plentiful uh, uh, houses were easy to purchase. The government was giving out credit and and mortgage backed uh, mortgage subsidies. But baby boomers had almost the entire cost of college covered for them. They turned around and sold that back to us like. Student loan debt wasn't even a thing until we get into the late 80s and early 90s. It's a relatively new phenomenon. So it is specifically something that has been saddled on my generation. And there's no reason why I should be saddled. I am. I'm talking about fucking baby boomers. All I want is the society that baby boomers had. I want high corporate taxes. I want a strong social safety net. I am tired of an elder generation telling me that I can't have what they were given. They were given everything. The most entitled generation ever. Because like my grandparents or and great grandparents lived lived through the depression lived through wartime they knew hardship so they set up a society where their children wouldn't have to face that and it worked and we had one of the most prosperous times in the history of the country but when reagan comes into office there's no i'm not lost i am telling you the goddamn truth I will show you the statistics right here. When the Reagan revolution happened, when the conservative movement, because there's a, there's a saying that you'll get more conservative as you get older that only works for like the baby boom generation who had everything handed to them. And no, no, no. Hard times make you radical. That's why the, the children's are getting radical out here because we've never experienced the world that the baby boom generation and the late Gen Xers grew up in. We've we've known nothing but economic turmoil and flat fucking wages. Here you go. Uh, this is the percent increase since 1970 in the annual cost to attend a University of Illinois. This is just one 
University we're using as an example, the median household income in Illinois and the minimum wage. You see how those numbers up until the 80s, they corresponded to each other, and then boom, Reagan takes over, and they split apart. Let's look at this. U- uh, U.S. debt in 2014 dollars and as pre- uh, percent of GDP. You see we're coming out of the Depression, wartime over here. These numbers They merge together as we create a prosperous time. Reagan comes into office. Boom! They diverge. Life expectancy over time versus healthcare spending. Notice how when Reagan comes to office, boom, we start spending a hell of a lot more and get way worse outcomes. Doesn't stop there. Here is total public debt as percent of gross domestic product skyrockets after Reagan comes to office. Incarcerated Americans skyrockets after Reagan comes to office and corresponds to the for-profit prisons and all the, the layers of privatized industries in our jail systems from, from bell bondsmen to the people who manufacture the ankle monitors to the people who do drug testing. It's all a fucking racket. This is, this is late-stage capitalism gone amok. Top marginal tax rate. And I, I always hate using this chart because pre-1966, it was way higher than this. It was up here in the 90 percentile. Reagan comes into office, plummets. These aren't coincidences. These are policies. These are policy choices. The fact that I have a lower life expectancy than the generations that came before me is a shame, and it is a shame on the baby boom generation. They did this. They did this to me. It is totally a policy choice. And Jimmy Carter was in office, and he came in, and he said, we got to tighten our our belts. We got to not spend so much on credit. We got to break our dependency on foreign oil. And the baby boob generation said, fuck no, we don't want to live in reality. We want to live in our own fucking bullshit. And they got high on coke, and they started partying with the Saudis. Fucking shit, tell me I'm lost. God damn, right-wingers are fucking morons. Dumbest fucks. Walking the planet. I didn't check what the poll said. What are we doing? View the results. I will abide by the poll. We're doing news. We doing news. Wait, did I just... What, uh, wait, are, are you... Are you... Are you gonna try to dispute what I said? I mean, I'm fucking correct. I... And I'm, I'm, I'm not dumping it all on boomers. But, I mean, there has been a, a policy choice. The fact that my life expectancy is lower than, than Gen X, than baby boomers, that's, that's, a, that's a blight. Like, somebody should be ashamed of that. But it's because we've created a society where everything... Is, is is for profit now. Every goddamn thing has to be monetized. And I'm tired of it. I'm sorry. I don't even know what's going on in chat. I get laser focused in on, on owning fucking chuds. Nixon did do a lot of good. That's the crazy part. This is back when Republicans weren't like completely batshit. 
the Pat Buchanan evangelical merger of the business interest fucking bullshit that I've pointed out so many times that Frank Zappa sang about in the 1980s. That shit, that shit came about later. I mean, if you go back a little further than Nixon, you get Eisenhower, who was courted by both parties. You, that was at a time when a person could be like the Democrats and the Republicans wanted Eisenhower to run as their candidate. What what kind of world could you live in now where both parties could court somebody to run as their candidate? The EPA in resigning. I, it's, it's, and like, this is one of the most expensive fucking countries to live in and we don't want to pay anybody fucking wages and you want to bitch that nobody wants to fucking work for your shit ass wages. It's amazing to me. I always show the statistic. This was like three or four fucking years ago before the pandemic. It was like $16 an hour is what you had to make to live in Alabama. That was one of the lowest in the country. $16 $16 an hour. So if you're asking anybody to work for less than $16 an hour, you are asking them to subsidize your business. And I don't get that. I don't get how anybody can be uh, on, the, on the side of a policy position that makes workers subsidize the owner's businesses. But there's a lot of things that just don't make sense to me. Coming from Eastern Kentucky, from the coal fields of Eastern Kentucky, I've always wondered how a company could own the fucking coal in the ground. Boggled my mind, thought coal companies, even back then, should be ran by the people, for the people. And I, whatever Red Five or whatever the fuck his name was, yeah, he just didn't like being hit with fucking facts. Right-wingers cannot take. Uh, woke, woke potato is fucking cool. I love me some woke potato. Right-wingers cannot take being hit with facts. Oh, Red Five's still here. Do you want to call in? Do you want to talk to me? Do you want to hop on Discord if you're more uh, tech savvy? Do you want to? Do you want to call on the on the phone lines? I got to open the phone line. Go on that screen. I am. I dropped facts on you. I showed you the fucking charts. I don't know. I don't know how you can dispute anything I said. You you got something for me? Or are you just gonna you just gonna Are you just gonna say the same nonsense every other dumb fuck right winger says? I'd love to hear from you. Phone lines are open, 917-830-4359. Apparently, somebody has been trying. Somebody has been trying to get a hold of me. You're on my side. Okay, fair enough. Okay, maybe I went off uh, for no reason. Well, glad to have you here. Love your face. And apparently, I stole that from I, Dan. Maybe I subconsciously... I've been trying not to say it anymore. Maybe I subconsciously suck it in. That's the reason why I don't watch uh, other people that do what I do. When I'm doing a lot of stand-up, I don't watch other stand-up specials. I don't want to absorb anything. I don't. I don't watch movie. If I'm if I'm making a movie, I'm not going to watch uh, movies that are in that that genre. So I don't subconsciously steal from them. I've I, I've got the ads all wrong. I apologize to you Twitch viewers. I try to catch the ads and you don't miss any of the show, but I'm not going to be able to do that because we're all fucked up because of the debate. Uh, Warlord redeemed the get back to the news and I didn't even see it. My apologies. So I'm going to go refill my coffee and I will leave you... Where's my browser at? There we go. I will leave you with the first words from the new Prime Minister of the UK... Rishi Sunak. I've just been to Buckingham Palace and accepted His Majesty the King's invitation to form a government in his name. 
It is only right to explain why I am standing here as your new mm. Prime Minister. Right now, our country is facing a profound economic crisis. The aftermath of COVID still lingers. Putin's war in Ukraine has destabilized energy markets and supply chains the world over. I want to pay tribute to my predecessor, Liz Truss. She was not wrong to want to improve growth in this country. It is a noble aim. And I admired her restlessness to create change. But some mistakes were made. Not born of ill will or bad intentions. Quite the opposite, in fact. But mistakes nonetheless. And I have been elected as leader of my party. As you can hear, he is indeed already being protested and booed. I've wondered if he is just yet another fall guy. and This is just going to be a, a ongoing thing until the general election in a couple years. Warlord, who is a UK resident, thinks uh, uh, Rishi Sunak could be able to hold together a coalition and actually govern. He's already facing pro, but then again, everybody faces protests, apparently. It's just a thing. The British people are pretty cool like that. And your Prime Minister, in part, to fix them. And that work begins immediately. I will place economic stability and confidence at the heart of this government's agenda. This will mean difficult decisions to come. But you saw me Austerity. during COVID doing everything I could to protect people and businesses with schemes like furlough. So he was the finance minister. Limits. More so now than ever. But I promise you this. I will bring that same compassion to the challenges we face today. The government I lead will not leave the next generation, your children and grandchildren, with a debt to settle that we were too weak to pay ourselves. I will unite. Sounds like he's talking about austerity. Not with words, but with action. I will work day in and day out to deliver for you. This government will have integrity, professionalism, and accountability at every level. Trust is earned, and I will earn yours. I will always be grateful to Boris Johnson for his incredible achievements as Prime Minister, and I treasure his warmth and generosity of spirit. And I know he would agree that the mandate my party earned in 2019 is not the sole property of any one individual. It is a mandate that belongs to and unites all of us. And the heart of that mandate is our manifesto. I will deliver on its promise, a stronger NHS, better schools, safer streets, control of our borders, protecting our environment, supporting our armed forces, leveling up and building an economy that embraces the opportunities of Brexit, where business- You gotta admit, their conservatives are a hell of a lot better than ours. And create jobs. I understand how difficult this moment is. After the billions of pounds it cost us to combat COVID, after all the dislocation that caused in the midst of a terrible war that must be seen successfully to its conclusions, I fully appreciate 
how hard things are. And I understand too that I have work to do to restore trust after all that has happened. Not trust, not Liz all Trust. I say trust. Is that I am not daunted. I know the high office I have accepted, and I hope to live up to its demands. But when the opportunity to serve comes along, you cannot question the moment, only your willingness. Yeah, I think I'd trade him so for Biden. Stand here before you, ready to take a she into the future. To put that's, your that's kind of racist of me to do that. To reach out and build a government that represents kind of voice the was that? traditions of my party. Sorry, Together, my apologies. We can achieve incredible things. We will create a future. I ran a bunch of people off with that. Of the sacrifices so many have made. And fill tomorrow and every day thereafter with hope. Thank you. You're welcome. But I, I don't know what for. We were in the debate. If I ignored you during the debate, it was because I said multiple times I'm going to lay out as much as possible and not talk. <laughs> yeah, the Fetterman debate, like, it, it is it is very obvious why they did the 30-minute the interview the other day. It was kind of to condition people how he was going to be during the debate. And I thought he did well, you know, for a, a stroke survivor that is having a hard time. Like, he's... He's clearly on top of it. It is just taking him a little bit to think and to respond. Okay, well, if I was... If I was yelling about something, if I was on another screen, like, you gotta cut me some slack, man, dude. God damn. Oh. <sighs> I'm not high enough for this shit. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, yeah. And Red, I apologize if I misread something you said. I'm I'm quick to jump off the deep end. Yeah, the fracking thing was weird, and he didn't accept. You know, it was it's it's one thing. So I can explain the fracking answer to you. It is the fact that I can show you the map. I'll show you the reason why fracking is a huge issue, right? What the what the fuck is it called? <laughs> you know, I was gonna be like, you know, hill basins or whatever. I think this has it high. You'll see how much of Pennsylvania is under. God, can I zoom in on it? Fracking is a huge industry in Pennsylvania. Not only that, you're talking about the rural vote who who are wanting fracking for the jobs kind of blurry but you can see like over half the state maybe that's a fucking lot is sitting on one of the world's biggest reserves of uh, natural gas whatever the the shell basin whatever the the technical name is for that and that basin has a fucking proper name so one of the things that is important about that is like pre covid and pre the drop uh, the the price drop in energy when like the markets plummeted there were a lot of small independent wells being pumped and like I think there's an itch 
to get back to some of these small independent companies. And I feel like that is tr- what Fetterman was trying to say. That, like, I want this mom and pop out here to be able to have this small rig as opposed to some some gigantic industry moving in. Because that's where all the movement was. And it was one of the reasons why we were experiencing... You, you hear right-wingers say that we were energy independent. And that was contingent upon the futures market of natural gas and oil, which it looked like which has been an about face that we found out like in the late nineties that we were sitting on way more oil and natural gas than what we thought we were. And there's been a push to produce domestically and Obama expanded that production domestically. That's one of the reasons why gas was the cheapest in the last fucking, since I paid 99 cents for it when I first started driving in like 1999 or 2000, whenever I got my permit, like Obama provided the cheapest and it came down to like 113 was the national average. That was because of our domestic production. COVID sent a shockwave through the futures market. And now there's not all these small independent rigs popping up and we're kind of depending on the large producers to produce oil. And they have, they do indeed have better uh, extraction tech. Technology has made it easier to get to it, but that still doesn't it doesn't eliminate the possibility of having earthquakes, uh, poisoning your water supply because they pump these chemicals in between the rocks in order to get them to move. That's what the fracking is: is pumping a bunch of chemicals into rocks to get them to move and bump together. And then it releases the natural gas. That's a, it's a very simplistic uh, uh, description of it, but close enough to understand what, what kind of is going on there. I don't, like I'm, I'm, I'm not a fucking engineer. Indeed. And there's a, there's a lot of issues with lithium mining. You ain't telling us anything we don't already know, Red 5. Cheers. Bravo, comrade. But if I had to guess, like, fracking is just one of those concessions. If Fetterman wanted to win, that was one of the concessions his his people said he had to make. But still, $250 would have been $15, what, like, probably $15 in today's dollars. Adjusted for inflation and shit, so. And $50, like... I would say most of my adult life, I'd say the average has been fifteen, twenty dollars would fill up a, a vehicle. Like I, I, I paid for a friend's gas the other day, and like I three twenty or something like that. That's, that seems about right. What, what are what are right wingers bitching about gas prices? Seems so pretty consistent with what I've paid in my adult life. Usually between like two fifty and three fifty, it fluctuates between that. But I would just assume that's the concession he had to make in order to win. And I understand that politically. And I know that I know that pisses left us off. And even I want to, you know, I, I would have liked a better fucking answer. I would have I would have liked for him to explain why he was changing his position, which he clearly was. That was his weakest point in the debate. Where they had the fucking quote from him. The based quote from what, like 2018, that said he he does not support fracking and never supported fracking, and he he struggled to say why. And like it's okay to say that your views have evolved. I see how this affects local local people. My constituency has reached out to me and told me they they are appreciative of the jobs that would be provided by these rigs. Uh, he tried to make a a argument about a local company putting in their own uh, 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 fracking well to to supply their own energy. So I guess that's something. But that was his weakest point in the debate. He had some witty lines for someone. And I think that, once again, that, that shows that 
His brain function is there. He's just taking time to process, and his mo- his fine motor skills are are still recovering because that's perfectly normal. And as I understand it, uh, he is expected to make a full recovery in a year or two. Or a year or two out from whenever he had the stroke. He definitely had some comebacks and one-liners. And I, he was setting expectations with that interview we watched the other day. So people could get a real good look at him, know what to expect. He really got to explain his side. And now... So, like, the, the reporter did take some pushback for being ableist and shit. But now I'm not so sure that it wasn't the campaign wanting to hone in on that specific topic... And let him talk about it for 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe. And once again, that's also us having the context of watching that interview the other day. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the polls look like. Once again, Shapiro... Dominating, Mastriano has just fallen like a rock. So even like, and I thought it was going to be Fetterman carrying Shapiro. But hopefully if it's Shapiro's turnout uh, and people just vote down ballot Democrat, that, that's going to help Fetterman. Yeah, now now I don't I, I feel a little bad about being as rough on the in, uh, on the interviewer because that may have very well been the campaign's idea. And if so, it's kind of understandable going into this debate. Like he's he's not at the point where that we thought he was going to be where he was, you know, quick-witted and snappy. So we need to set expectations going into the debate so it's not going to hurt us. Because if you just went into the debate, yeah, Professor Q, uh, uh, that was 8 o'clock. But it'll be up on the YouTube. Totally go back and watch it. But their, man, their feed, their feed had some, some bullshit going on with it. Oh, and I love the fact, did I tell you guys last night about all the, like, I have all the debates from this debate season that we watched on stream. They're all in their own little individual uh, compartmentalized uh, uh, section on my YouTube. And they get, they get a lot of views, especially like the North Carolina one, which wasn't uh, available anywhere else, apparently. It, it was behind a paywall. And just me being who I am was able to watch it, of course. So uh, I've been I've been doing all the debates individually. I've even been putting them up on on Spotify and Google Podcasts, all that good shit. Been putting them up there individually, and Spotify has the video uh, along with the 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 podcast. But I've also been splitting the show off where we do the news. And that's, that's the funny thing to me is last night I put up, because I clip them apart, you know, so there's a news program and there's the, the debate. Last night, I put up the, what did we watch? Ron DeSantis, Charlie Crist. Oh, and we didn't even get to watch it live. I was having internet issues, so it was basically just me watching it and putting up the replay so people could actually watch it. Within an hour, it got more views than the Utah debate. So all these debates that I've, 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 I've done on YouTube, they've been great for my content, right? My views are way up on YouTube, subscribers way up. Doing the debates have been great. But there's only been one debate that hasn't even broke double digits. Like most of them have gotten like 90, 100, 150 views. Some of them all the way up and then like 1,500 views. I think I think Abbott and Beto was incredibly popular. I think it got a couple of thousand views. The Utah Senate debate is sitting on five views. The Utah Senate debate. 
This is the only one that hasn't gotten any kind of uh, uh, appreciable amount of views. <laughs> and I laugh my ass off. that The fact that Ron DeSantis and Charlie Crist, the re-upload that I put up last night in the middle of the fucking night at like 4 o'clock in the morning, it had more views <laughs> than the Utah Senate debate, which has been up like a week and a half now. Nobody gives a shit about Utah. And that debate was actually really fucking fun. Thank you so much, Girl of the Gray. I appreciate that. John Ashcroft is the one as What? Whoa. Is John Ashcroft is still alive? I thought he died not that long ago. Didn't we report on this and didn't I play Let the Eagle Soar? Is this motherfucker still actually alive? He is! God damn it. Well, we gotta listen to it again. Why you guys gotta keep doing this? I didn't even put sore, but sour. <laughs> Every time John Ashcroft gets brought up, which happens from time to time, we do a nightly news show. We cover a lot of shit. We do deep dives. John Ashcroft has got him, gotten brought up a few times on this show. Every time we got to go back and we got to play him singing this stupid ass song. Mighty eagles soar once more. Let the eagles soar like she's never. God, Kissinger is still alive. Cover them statue titties. That's exactly right. That was what he was known for. Came into came into office with the Bush administration and wanted to cover Lady Justice's tits up. It was an affront to to his Christian sensibilities. And we're going to we're going to talk about a superintendent candidate in uh, Oklahoma here in a little bit that's going to scare you. If let the eagle soar and covering up Lady Justice's breastuses doesn't do it for you. I forgot that. Oh, Kissinger. You should go follow Is Henry Kissinger Still Alive on Twitter. Uh, one of my favorite follows when the, back when they let me on Twitter. But it tweeted out the other day, yes, and I can't believe this was a, as long term of a commitment as what it's turned out to be. Yeah, she got like, like it's, it's, it's like she's got a toga on, right? One tit's hanging out. It's just one. It's just one. Her sword before from rocky coast to golden shore. Let the mighty eagle soar. I had to live through that shit. So you guys gotta watch it. Anytime John Ashcroft is brought up. Talk about nuclear war. Free the justice titties. You live in sexual anarchy. Honestly, what is up with you woke moralists trying to cancel the titty? Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Ukraine alleges Russian dirty bomb deception at nuclear plant. Reading from the AP. Neutral, but is also going to be slanted towards the U.S. State Department's version of events. Just pointing that out. We're going to zoom in so you guys can see. I almost, I almost, I knew there were going to be... I knew there were going to be new people here tonight. I... 
What the biggest complaint about the the Troll Patrol is that all the graphics are too busy and it turns people off. The redesign is coming. I was going to wait until 420 originally because that's when I always do like completely new redesigns and shit. But like I feel like it's this is holding me back. So I've already I've already done the redesign and I was like, "All right, I'll wait until after Halloween." And then I'm like, well, fuck, a lot of eyes are going to be on me tonight. I might go ahead and switch. And then do, you know, I wasn't planning on doing a Halloween version of it yet. Sorry, I had to talk about my graphics for a little bit. Looks good. Apparently it's Warlord approved. I showed Warlord like a little glimpse and he was like, yeah. I was like, be mean about it. Tell me what you don't like. And he said nothing. Yeah, it's a full-on titty, but it's only, like, it's only one, right? Am I mistaken? Like, it's a toga over one side, but, like, with a titty hanging out on the other. It was like a bronze statue. All titties should be protected and cherished. Even mine. Pulled my fucking headphones out. That's what I was thinking. It's like a bronze, or maybe maybe it's like more of a, a cream colored statue, but like. I want to say it's a bronze statue. It's been a while since I it's been a while since I talked about the statue's titty. <laughs> Yeah, like, I start talking about nuclear war, and then I'm like, I'm sorry I didn't do my graphics tonight. But, like, the the the, the story is going to take up the whole screen now. You guys are going to see the entire browser. I'll just be down in the corner. It looks a lot cleaner. And I almost did it tonight. I don't even know what to call that. It's not a bronze statue. It's like a silver statue. I guess I can show this on stream. (laughs) Everybody knows what we're talking about. Except people listening to the podcast. They're like, oh, I can't see statue titty. William Sprain, what's going on, my friend? Welcome. Go Packers. People, people just watching the the stream can't see your avatar. Pewter, pewter statue, maybe. He was triggered by the titty. Triggered by the titty. Fuck Lindsey Graham. Apparently, the angel of death is coming for Lindsey Graham and assorted other public figures. Once, and I am really killing it on my thumbnail game. The Angel of Death is coming for Lindsey Graham, Michelle Obama, Ilan Omar, uh, Justice John Roberts, Hillary Clinton, uh, Joe Biden, uh, Bill Gates, Eric Adams, Katie Hochul. There was a, there was a whole assortment of them. You know, let's go. Why was Henry Kissinger? Why was Henry Kissinger not on that list of all the people? I'm gonna. I'm going to assume that the QAnon conference was right. Please, YouTube, don't ban me. And Henry Kissinger is gonna live another twenty years. It ain't gonna happen this year. We aren't going to get a a a Christmas present. There were some other good people, or at least people that didn't deserve to have the angel of death visit them. On the whole list. I just only had room on the thumbnail for a few, and I wanted to make sure it was, like, the figures that would be the most triggering to right-wingers. Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton. (laughs) Aren't I what? Living in sexual anarchy? You live in sexual anarchy? Oh, fucking, I was supposed to get back to the news forever ago. 
Ukraine alleges Russian dirty bomb deception at nuke plant. What what happens when people walk in here and they, they just see me being stupid? And then all of a sudden I turn into like serious newsman and I actually have like the news voice. And it's like, oh shit, this motherfucker could do this for real. He could be an anchor on a news station. Turn down for what? Are you telling me to turn up? Because I would say that's your volume. My levels look good. Just saying. Can't hear what? You're going to have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. This is one of my, <laughs> some of my favorite lines of all time. I don't want to be a news anchor unless they let me do a news show like this. This is too goddamn fun. I want you guys to help make me famous here. Come on, come on. If I just get Jackson Hinkle level, I'll, I'm, I'm doing well. Yes, clinically, that's a homerism. I don't have to. Who's winning so far? The Green Bay Packers. Green Bay is winning. And I don't know, like, I'm in dark mode. I don't know how to make, like, the AP is white. I don't know how to make it dark mode. Because I know that's that also turns people off that it's so goddamn bright. I don't know how to, I don't know how to fix that. And as we've seen when I try to use the MSN version, like, it, it, it operates like shit. Quality of life improvements for the Troll Patrol going forward. I'm all about them. I'm trying. I'm winning, William. I'm winning. Seriously, I want to do this. And I'll look, if you guys help me get to where I am, am can make a comfortable living, I don't want to be fucking famous. I don't want to make a million dollars. I don't want to be fucking Vosh. I have no desire for any of that shit. I want a small niche corner of the internet where a cool community gathers for a few hours every night to talk about the fucking news and other bullshit with very limited kind of advertising as I said last night I would sell to like my friends I would let my, my friends that have bands advertise like their new albums and shit my friend who runs a, a t-shirt store Toxic teas, that that kind of shit. Those are the, are the kind of people I would court as advertisers, products that I'd actually believe in, that you guys would actually want to consume. Spotlighting independent artists and shit. They ain't got any money either. <laughs> oh no, I gotta worry about something. But that's why I let the commercials blast on Twitch. But I'm trying to do them in a way where I like fuck, you know fuck Twitch over, kind of. The commercials play the way they're supposed to, but I try to, you know, give everybody a PP break and refill your drink and we come back and we watch the news. Uh, yeah, I'm just ranting now. I've lost everybody. Everybody's like, fucking do the news. This is, this is good pot, by the way. This is really good pot. <laughs> it could have something to do with it. Ukraine's nuclear energy operator said Tuesday that Russian forces were performing secret work at Europe's largest nuclear power plant activity that could shed light on Russia's claims that the Ukrainian military is preparing a provocation involving a radioactive device. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogol, I fucked his name up, made an unsubstantiated allegation that Ukraine was preparing to launch a so-called dirty bomb Shogu uh, leveled the charge over the weekend in calls to his British, French, Turkish, and U.S. counterparts. Britain, France, and the United States rejected it out of hand. They were acting out of pockets what's going on as transparently false. Ukraine also dismissed Moscow's claims as an attempt to distract attention from the Kremlin's own alleged plans to detonate a dirty bomb, which uses explosives to scatter radioactive waste in an effort to sow terror. Inner Godom 
the Ukrainian, and I fucked that up too, the Ukrainian state enterprise that operates the country's four nuclear power plants said Russian forces have carried out secret construction work over the last week at the occupied Zafirisa uh, nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Russian officials controlling the area won't give access to Ukrainian staff running the plant or monitors from the UN's atomic energy watchdog that would allow them to see what the Russians are doing. Energodium said Tuesday in a statement. It assumes the Russians are preparing a terrorist attack using nuclear materials and radioactive waste stored at the plant. It said there were 174 containers at the plant's dry spent fuel storage facility, each of them containing 24 assemblies of spent nuclear fuel. Sounds like they're trying to be open and do an open accounting of what they've got, but also, could that be subterfuge to say, oh... We said there were 15, but we actually had 12, and there were three missing. I don't, exactly, I don't want to play conspiracy theorist here. I don't fucking shit. Because I know, I know there's a whole war raging on the left, and I don't want no part of it. We're going to talk about, like, it seeped into the Democratic and Progressive Caucuses. Jesus fucking Christ. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. What is a dirty bomb and why is Russia saying Ukraine could use one? Aston answered, I am sorry. Yes, it was uh, about two hours ago now. Uh, You're on YouTube. Click on my channel. Uh, You can go back and watch it from the beginning. You watch the stream from the beginning or here in a couple hours. I'm going to have it up as its own independent thing. And you can check out the uh, Fetterman Oz debate. What is a dirty bomb and why is Russia saying Ukraine could use one? Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu told the UK's Defense Secretary uh, Ben Wallace in a phone call that he was concerned about the possible provocations by Kyiv involving the use of a dirty bomb. Roland Art, good evening. I also think I fuck up your name every time. Dustin, so glad to see you as well. I don't know if I gave you a shout out. Uh, the Packers are winning, William. He also made similar comments to his opposite numbers in the U.S., France, and Turkey. Uh, Russia has also made its claims to the United Nations Security Council and said using a dirty bomb would be an act of nuclear terrorism. A dirty bomb is a bomb that contains radioactive material such as uranium, which is scattered through the air when its conventional explosive detonates doesn't need to contain highly refined radioactive material as is used in a nuclear bomb. Instead, it could use radioactive materials from hospitals, nuclear power stations, or research laboratories. This makes them much cheaper and quicker to make than nuclear weapons. They can also be carried in the back of a vehicle, for example. Uh, feds, please don't come at me. That was the BBC. And they're seemingly a little too detailed chart there. FBI, I'm on my best behavior. (laughs) Because radioactive fallout can cause serious illness. I'm glad Warlord wasn't here to clip that. Because radioactive fallout can cause serious illness, such as cancer, such a bomb would cause panic among the targeted population. A wide area around the blast zone would also have to be evacuated for decontamination or abandoned completely. The Federation of American Scientists has calculated that if a bomb containing 9 grams of cobalt, cobalt 60, and 5 kilograms of TNT were to be exploded at the tip of Manhattan in New York, it would make the whole area of the city uninhabitable for decades. Those of you who do drugs, you know exactly how much 9 grams is or how little 9 grams is. For this reason, dirty bombs are known as weapons of mass disruption. However, as weapons, they are very unreliable. For the radioactive material in a dirty bomb to be scattered across its target zone, it has to be reduced to powder form. But if the particles are too fine or released into strong winds, they will scatter too widely to do much harm. Why did Russia make its dirty bomb claim? Now, we are reading from the BBC. So, also slanted towards a Western imperialist uh, viewpoint. 
The U.S.-based Institute for the Study of War has said Russia's defense minister likely sought to slow or suspend Western military aid to Ukraine and possibly weaken the NATO alliance in scaremongering calls. There has also been speculation that Russia is planning to explode a dirty bomb in Ukraine itself and pin the blame on Ukrainian forces in a false flag attack. However, many uh, military analysts say Russia would not be this foolhardy given the damage a dirty bomb could do to its own troops and the territory under its control. The ISW itself has said the Kremlin is unlikely to be preparing an imminent false flag dirty bomb attack. There has not yet been a successful dirty bomb attack anywhere in the world. However, there have been attempts. In 1996, rebels from Chechnya planted a bomb containing dynamite and cesium-137 in Moscow's uh, Izmozlova Park. The uh, cesium had been extracted from cancer treatment equipment. Security services discovered its location and it was diffused in 1998. Chechnya's uh, intelligence service found and defused a dirty bomb that had been placed near a railway line in Chechnya. In 2002, Jose Padilla, a U.S. citizen who had contacts with Al-Qaeda, was arrested in Chicago on suspicion of planning a dirty bomb attack. He was given a 21-year prison sentence. That one we might need to uh, uh, view with some skepticism. We know how U.S. forces are. Years later, uh, Darren Berut, a British national and Al-Qaeda member, was arrested in London and subsequently jailed for 30 years for plotting terrorist attacks in the U.S. and the U.K. that would have included the use of a dirty bomb. However, neither Padilla or, uh, nor Berut, or Beirut had begun assembling their bombs before they were arrested. Before we move on... To domestic affairs, we want to highlight that Brittany Griner loses her appeal and be forced to spend nine years in the Russian penal colony. Back in February, the Phoenix Mercury basketball player was arrested at a Russian airport after police allegedly found cannabis oil cartridges in her luggage. The 31-year-old has remained in Russia custody ever since and was convicted in August for drug smuggling and possession. I, the Biden administration stopped Dennis Rodman from going to Russia, saying it was working on the situation. Stopped Bill Richardson from going to Russia. There's also a teacher who is imprisoned in Russia. Um, more than likely bullshit charges. And I get really upset about seeing uh, the asshole right-wingers in the comments saying she had this shit coming to her. Oh, she hates America. Let's see how she hates uh, America after she uh, stays in the penal colony. What the fuck? She's being used as a pawn in a game of chess by a world power. She more than likely did, and even if she did, even if she did mistakenly leave that shit in her bag, she had some CBD oil on her, even if she did, she doesn't deserve this, but I would put money on Russia planted it on her. I would put money because she travels all the fucking time. She does that. all. She goes over to Russia all the fucking time. And she was only there because she doesn't get paid enough in the U.S. In other words, stand, stand with your fellow workers. And that even means WNBA players because they, they are barely scraping to get by. And you, you can look up their, their salaries. And they're probably making 150 grand or 200 grand, whatever it is. But they have to pay for their own fucking expenses. It's just like WWE wrestlers. Some of them making 100, 200 grand. Barely covers what they are out being on the road. Russian border security. I learned it from watching you. Exactly. As if, as I don't, I don't put it past U.S. Uh, police to plant shit on people. So why would I put it past Russia? Moving over to domestic policy. Progressive Democrats withdraw their letter calling for more diplomatic efforts with Russia. Apparently, this is a whole thing today. A day after House progressives sent a letter to President Biden urging him to change his approach to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the group abruptly changed course amid intense pushback from Democratic lawmakers. 
The Congressional Progressive Caucus hereby withdraws its recent letter to the White House regarding Ukraine. As according to Representative Pramila Jayapal, the chair of the caucus, in a statement on Tuesday. The about face comes after frustrated Democratic lawmakers took to social media to offer their explanation of the letter, originally drafted and signed by 30 members this summer, and was not recirculated ahead of its public release on Monday. It's not very long, so allow me to read it to you. Let me see if I can make it a little bigger for you. Mr. President, we write with appreciation for your commitment to Ukraine's legitimate struggle against Russia's war of aggression. <coughs> Sorry about that. Your support for the self-defense of an independent, sovereign, and democratic state has been supported by Congress, including through various appropriations of military, economic, and humanitarian aid in furtherance of this cause. Your administration's policy was critical to enable the Ukrainian people, through their courageous fighting and heroic sacrifices, to deal a historic military defeat to Russia, forcing Russia to dramatically scale back the stated goals of the invasion. Crucially, you achieved this while also maintaining that it is imperative uh, to avoid direct military conflict with Russia, which will lead to World War III, something we must strive to prevent. The risk of nuclear weapons being used has been estimated to be higher now than at any time since the height of the Cold War. Given, uh, given the catastrophic possibilities of nuclear escalation and miscalculation, which only increase the longer this war continues, we agree with your goal of avoiding direct military conflict as an overriding national security priority. Given the destruction created by this war for Ukraine and the world, as well as the risk of catastrophic escalation, we also believe it is in the interest of Ukraine, the United States, and the world to avoid a prolonged conflict. For this reason, we urge you to pair the military and economic support the United States has provided to Ukraine with a proactive diplomatic push, redoubling efforts to seek a realistic framework for a ceasefire. This is consistent with your recognition that there's going to have to be a negotiated settlement here and your concern that Vladimir Putin doesn't have a way out right now and I'm trying to figure out what we do about that. Sounds perfectly reasonable thus far. We are under no illusions regarding the difficulties involving engaging Russia given its outrageous and illegal invasion of Ukraine and its decision to make additional illegal annexations of Ukrainian territory. However, if there is a way to end the war while preserving a free and independent Ukraine, it is in America's responsibility to pursue every diplomatic avenue to support such a solution that is acceptable to the people of Ukraine. Such a framework, uh, such a framework would presumably include incentives uh, to end hostilities, including some form of sanctions relief, and bring together the international community to establish security guarantees for a free and independent Ukraine that are acceptable for all parties, particularly Ukrainians. The alternative to diplomacy is protracted war, with both its attendant certainties and catastrophic and unknowable risks. Russia's invasion has caused incalculable harm for the people of Ukraine, leading to the death of countless thousands of civilians, Ukrainian soldiers, and displacement of 13 million people, while Russia's recent seizures of cities in Ukraine's east have led to the most pivotal moment in the conflict and the consolidation of Russian control over roughly 20% of Ukraine's territory. The conflict threatens an additional tens of millions more worldwide as skyrocketing prices in wheat, fertilizer, and fuel spark acute crises in global hunger and poverty. A war that is allowed to grind on for years, potentially escalating in intensely and geographic scope, threatens to displace, kill, and immiserate far more Ukrainians while causing hunger, poverty, and death around the world. The conflict has also contributed to elevated gas and food prices at home, fueling inflation and high oil prices for Americans in recent months. Economists believe that if the situation in Ukraine is stabilized, some of the speculative concerns driving higher fuel costs will subside and likely lead to a drop in world oil prices. We agree with the administration's perspective that it is not America's place to pressure Ukraine's government regarding sovereign decisions. And with the principle you have enunciated, 
that sh- there should be nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. But as legislators responsible for the expenditure of tens of billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars and military assistance in the conflict, we believe such involvement in this war also creates a responsibility for the United States to seriously explore all possible avenues, including direct engagement with Russia to reduce harm and support Ukraine in, supporting a, in achieving a peaceful settlement. In May, President Zelensky, despite deadlocked negotiations, reiterated that the war will only definitively end through diplomacy and had previously explained that any mentally healthy person always chooses the diplomatic path because he or she knows even if it is difficult, it can prevent the loss of thousands, tens of thousands, and maybe even millions of lives. In conclusion... We urge you to make vigorous diplomatic efforts in support of a negotiated settlement and ceasefire, engage in direct talks with Russia, explore prospects for a new European security arrangement acceptable to all parties that will allow for a sovereign and independent Ukraine, and in coordination with our Ukrainian partners, seek a rapid end to the conflict and reiterate this goal as America's chief priority. Now, this was written a few months ago, released yesterday, signed by Pramila Jayapal, the chair of the Progressive Caucus. Uh, 30 members signed on to it. Corey Bush, Earl Blumenauer, uh, uh, Jesus Garcia, Raul Guevara, uh, Sarah Jacobs, Rokana, Barbara Lee, Ilan Omar, Sheila Jackson Lee, Ariana Presley, Mark Pocan, uh, Nadia Velasquez, Gwen Moore, Yvette Clark, uh, Rashida Talib, Henry Johnson Jr., AOC, Mondaire Jones, Peter DeFazio, Jamal Bowman, Alma Adams, Marie Newman, uh, Shelly uh, Pingree, Jamie Raskin. Jamie Raskin, hell yeah. Mark Takano, Andre Carson, Bonnie Watson Coleman, Donald M. Payne, and Mark DeSalnier. All of which deserve uh, deserve applause on this one because that was a very well-worded letter. I agree wholeheartedly with everything in that letter. Uh, this was a this was a, a letter drafted by the House Progressive Caucus. So bravo to them. I agree with this position. Now this letter that we just read, which is so easy to agree with, caused an uproar a day after House Progressive sent a letter to President Biden urging him to change his approach. To Russia's invasion to, of Ukraine, the group abru- abruptly changed course amid intense pushback. The about face comes after frustrated Democratic lawmakers took to social media to offer their explanation. So, Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs said, Timing and diplomacy is everything. I signed this letter on June 30th, but a lot has changed since then. I wouldn't sign it today. We have to continue supporting Ukraine economically and militarily to give them the leverage they need to end the war. Oh, God. I don't like that they've backed down. I don't like that they're backing down because there was nothing wrong with that letter. I don't, I don't know what has changed other than diplomacy being even more, even more imperative at this moment. I, it's not warranted. What was warranted? I don't... I, I mean, I understand. I would much rather Jayapal come forward and apologize if it was warranted, yes. But, like, it is it warranted at, at this moment in time? What what got in their ear? Is, is it, like... Apparently, it's the rest of the Democrats. Dustin, I'm worried that you may be right, or at least 
So Putin's ultimate go goal is reuniting the Soviet Union. But it's it's especially Georgia and Ukraine. Uh, because that gives them control of like 12 to 15% more of the world's uh, oil and natural gas. As I was talking about when we had the caller DM the other day. It was like, well, what's, what's the reason for supporting Ukraine? I'm like, the oil in the Caspian Sea. Ukraine and Zelensky. That's possible too. That is possible too. I don't know. They like give him Ukraine and like they would negotiate Zelensky coming to the U.S. Motherfucker is gonna have a talk show on CNN or something in a few a few years. Oh shit! I hope I'm not right on that one. If you guys clip that and my god, it's Zelensky tonight on fucking CNN. I'm. Oh, oh my God. Oh. That was just a joke. World, please don't make that happen. During the pandemic, student test scores fell. And here's the thing is it also happened in states that were closed minimally. Like all the red states that, um, which, which lag behind in education anyway, saw the same drop in student test scores. So there's something else going. It's what they call a lurking uh, variable here. Correlation doesn't equal causation. It could be, you know, a fucking pandemic going on is hard on kids. And seeing the, their their grandparents die and suffer, seeing the the discord that has been sowed by the right wing in this country, the attack on education that people don't feel safe at even fucking school board meetings, driving out good teachers or making it hard on teachers to teach when they are in the classroom. I'm sure there's a lot of factors in why test scores have dropped. Let's hear what the Secretary of hear what the Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona, has to say about the uh, drop in test scores. I already even I already had it up. Education Kikyo. official. Kikyo, good evening. If I missed anybody else coming in here, Monks, if I said good evening to you, so glad to see you. Sometimes people come in when I'm uh when I'm reading something, I don't get the chance to say hey across the country are rethinking their strategy after students posted alarming math and reading scores. The first national report card was released since the start of the pandemic, and it shows some major setbacks. Fourth grade students dropped to 36 percent proficiency in math. Those numbers are down from 41 percent in 2019. Reading profici proficiency also took a slight dip. The nation's eighth graders posted similar results. 26% of 8th graders were deemed proficient in math. That's down from 34%. Reading proficiency dropped to 31% of students. U.S. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona joins us more for, uh, on all of this. Secretary Cardona, welcome. Uh, you have called these test results, quote, appalling and unacceptable. How do you intend to fix them? They are appalling and they are unacceptable. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, we have an opportunity here to make sure we double down on providing better uh, access to reading and math supports for our students. And let me also say this, the 2019 day. Well, I can tell you banning books is probably not going to help reading scores. Just saying. And I wonder, like, could this also have something to do with, like, I heard so much bullshit about, you know, common core math. And all Common Core was, was teaching students, instead of rote memorization of your times tables, which is what I had, right? So we had like a, a, a jingle to like memorize, like two times two is four and two times three is six. And blah, blah. there was like a song that went with that. It was like the entire times tables. And it was just rote memorization. So that isn't good, actually. We've learned that. So what Common Core would do would be to teach you to approach a math problem from multiple different angles. Uh, to be able to say, well, I can solve it this way by... And this is one of the things that, that 
This is the reason why it upset parents so much, is because they wanted him to try multiple different ways to solve a problem, and the parent was like, Oh my god, I was taught it like this! Why, 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 did, why is it not like this anymore? I can't do this! And it's fucking insane, because they were wanting to teach critical thinking skills to children. So there was this huge pushback to Common Core, because... Parents didn't understand it. Right-wing propaganda seeped in because the the for-profit education system wants to take down public schools and privatize the shit. So it was a good way to it. It sounds scary too. Ooh, Common Core. So upset. It's so upset. And yeah, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to to teach. And that's another reason, because you have a calculator in your pocket, it's important to teach how to come to the right answer and how to approach things uh, from, from multiple angles. That also helps you with other things, like this is, this is the way you do Photoshop. You learn different techniques in Photoshop, and then you apply them as you need them as these different situations arise. You, you, like, you develop the skills... By learning just different techniques. And there's there's like 50 different ways you can do something in Photoshop. You just have to learn which tool is best for you at this time to employ. I'm, I don't necessarily think that smartphones equal dumb people. I, I, I There is a case to be made. Studies have been done that, that kids probably don't need fucking phones. They don't need screens. We should very much limit their screen time. On the flip side of that, you know, if you give a kid a computer, he can take apart, put back together when he's a, uh, when he's like fucking seven or eight, and he can play around. He can put in his own fucking graphics card and shit. Start doing shit like that. You're gonna have your little engineering wizard in a few years if they're into that kind of thing. So like, I'm torn on it. It's kind of like a. And then you've also got to look at, you know, schools are turning to remote learning to help alleviate some of the problem of class size. Like when I was talking to DM the other day, the one of the reasons, uh, one of the things he even agreed with me on was like, you know, teacher to student ratio. The way you do that is by investing in schools and hiring more teachers. It's, it's, it's not fucking hard. It's a policy decision. Really, they're doing like uh, uh, classes to help teach, to help parents with the math, to help their. St- I mean, I understand it's hard, but like, it doesn't seem hard to me because once I, I, I like, logic is something you have to be trained in. So, like, it, to me, it just seems obvious, but I guess you get. People have with their common sense and their intuition and shit. But yeah, there's a lot of shit going on besides COVID. But a lot of it, COVID is playing a big factor in, in exacerbating the issue. Data. That was nothing to brag about either. We've lost our spot. We have to work uh, to make sure that our students here in the United States are number one again in the world. No, That's spot like my dog eating. spot. Um, we have an opportunity here with the American Rescue Plan dollars, with the same urgency that we had reopening our schools, to raise the bar for our students, to provide them more opportunities. That means having highly qualified teachers in every classroom for every student, providing uh, more opportunities after school, providing summer learning opportunities that give students uh, a chance to catch up on what was lost during the pandemic, but also raise the bar because those 2019 data uh, is not something that I I, I aspire to achieve. I wanna go past that. Uh, Secretary, you know, one of the areas where especially students of color, black and Latino students are really lagging behind had to do with remote learning. Right. Students who did not have access to computers or good Internet or lived in housing. That's also a factor I didn't even think of at the moment. They didn't have the quiet space to do classes. That points to perhaps a lack of preparation uh, from the department to, 
to enabling students to have what they needed to do to learn better. How is the department now equipping students uh, for moving forward if they have to do distance learning? And what kind of guidance do you think should have been in place in preparation to equip them with right. what they needed then? Uh, you're right. You know, when, when I came in uh, as Secretary of Education in uh, March of 2021, a year after the pandemic, there was very little guidance that went out. I was a commissioner in Connecticut. There was very little guidance that went out. Right away when we got in here, we went from 47 percent of the schools fully open to close to 100 percent, maybe nine months later. Um, we worked hard to pass the bipartisan infrastructure plan that's going to improve broadband access uh, through the American Rescue Plan dollars, $130 billion to our uh, k 12 schools to make sure students have access to technology and that we provide professional learning opportunities for teachers. What good is a laptop if we're not helping our teachers understand how to use that technology? So we have invested a lot, but that's just the beginning. We need to double down, as I said before, not only at the federal level, but also at the state level. Look, if this is not a wake-up call for governors, 39%, 41%, those are extremely low numbers. We can do better. Our students deserve it. Um, Secretary, I recognize that you only came into your position in 2021, and I want to go back to something you were saying about 2019 and those test scores uh, not being right. where they should have been anyway. Um, is this a failure of the Department of Education to actually get our students, regardless of their socioeconomic, race, or cultural background, to where they need to be in this country? Is it a failure of the Department of Education? I think all of us need to be uh, uh, look, looked at as responsible for m normalizing what you called out earlier. We have achievement gaps uh, based on place and race uh, that have been normalized in this country for the last several decades. So what we're trying to do here, uh, as Secretary of Education, I'm really pushing hard to make sure that we put out those issues and, and communicate with families uh, where our students are, help families uh, hold our, our education community accountable for utilizing the American Rescue Plan dollars to help their children. Look, I'm a father of two high schoolers during this pandemic. How do you fix they it, They were though? impacted significantly. How do, How do you, you fix, fix it? it? As I said earlier, you make sure you have highly qualified teachers in every classroom. You make sure you have after school programming. You have summer school programming. High That's easier content. said than done, brother. We know what to do. Do we have the uh, willingness to invest in education long term? We can't just count well, on the American Rescue Plan dollars and the urgency of the president and half of Congress to get this fixed. This is a issue that has uh, permeated for generations, for decades of underinvestment in education. If we're serious about closing these gaps and giving our students a chance to succeed, we need to invest in education and make sure that we're providing the resources to our students. What we're talking about today are teacher shortages. That's a symptom of underinvestment in our schools. Wow. Let's, let's be honest about what the issues are and let's address them together. And yep. that also, as you say, goes to making sure that we treat teachers like real professionals in this country. Um, I want to ask you about something else, changing topics a little bit. Roughly 40 million Americans are now in limbo after an appeals court temporarily blocked President Biden's student loan forgiveness program. Okay, student loan forgiveness, okay. I was like, what, what other thing are you going to ask him about? You know, we're not deterred. Uh, we know 40 million people are counting on us to, to fight for them, and we're going to continue to fight for them. Uh, these, uh, this is a temporary stay right now. We have uh, folks suing us, some Republicans suing us, uh, to stop us from providing debt relief to hardworking Americans. And these are people that are trying to live the American dream, and these are also people who are paying for their children's education. Um, unfortunately, some of these same people that uh, want to block us are people that benefited from loan relief last year with PPP loans. Uh, it, it's hypocrisy yep. at its best. We're not going to stop fighting, and we're going to communicate with those who uh, have applied, and we're still encouraging folks to... There is your... And he's still encouraging folks to apply. I just hit you with the... Link in the description if you have not applied yet. Go ahead, do it, even though it is on pause right now. They are still processing them. And uh, hopefully it will go forward in just a few weeks, possibly, maybe. We'll see what happens. The Alaska GOP has censured the head of the Senate GOP for supporting the GOP senator from Alaska. Do you think we're stupid? 
You think we're fools? Alaska GOP censures Mitch McConnell for divisive attack ads against Trump-backed Senate candidate. Alaska's Republican Party voted Monday night to censure Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell for backing a series of attack ads against Trump-endorsed Senate candidate Kelly Tashbaka, who is trying to unseat incumbent Senator Lisa Murkowski, further widening the gap between McConnell and Trump-allied Republicans. The state's Republican Party slammed McConnell in a Facebook post Monday night arguing his financial support for Murkowski through the Senate Leadership Fund is in direct contradiction of the party, which endorsed a Tabaka uh, in July. No one to root for in this fight, in, as producer Dave loves to say. In the statement, Alaskan party officials call on the Senate Leadership Fund to immediately stop running attack ads against Tabaka, arguing the ads are divisive and misleading, malicious, and a gross distortion of fact. Most of the ads suggest Tabaka may have committed fraud and wasted taxpayer money as a member of the Alaska Department of Administration. According to the Anchorage Daily News, although factcheck.org found some ads paid for by the Senate Leadership Fund leave the false impression Tabaka supports an all-out ban on birth control, she has said she hopes to ban some birth control by mail, but later said her remarks were taken out of context. Meanwhile, in a rare move on Monday, Murkowski endorsed Representative Mary Patola, the Democratic candidate running against Trump-endorsed former Alaskan Governor Sarah Palin for the state's lone House seat. Patola later endorsed Murkowski, saying she would rank her first out of her four candidates in the state's ranked choice voting system. <laughs> the meme of the girls fighting with a guy takes a bong rip. Yep. I no one to root for here except Peltola. And uh, she would be the first uh, native from Congress or native in Congress uh, from Alaska, I do believe. Native Alaskan, finally. Fox News airs a poll and the and the anchor immediately scolds the colleague for citing it. On the couch that criminal justice reform is separate and distinct from what Fetterman is. So we have Kaylee McEnany here. That's who's speaking. We're going to cut to Harris Faulkner. I, this is one of their panel shows. I think there's like four or five of these young ladies sitting around a couch. Just setting the stage for everyone. This is Kaylee McEnany, I do believe. Doing Fetterman on the parole board has voted more times than any other member to let people with life prison sentences out. That is very different than the First Step Act. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem, okay? When you look at the polls, first of all, Fetterman is leading. and He's not leading within the by margin. Six, he's six living so, Still, he's still leading by 6%. One. Two, I would agree with you on issues as far as that's what the campaign should be about. And I think the reason that, Doc, look, I'm a Democratic strategist, not a Republican strategist, right? But if I were a Republican strategist, I would be telling Dr. Oz tonight to do exactly what Emily just said. Because his, his popularity, his approval rating is not good. And this is a problem for him. And it's not just being an outsider, as many view him in the state of Pennsylvania. It's the personal attacks as a doctor on Fetterman's health. And like He's good. Said, that's not what, that's not what people but want. But what about voting to let these murderers out? We put up their pictures. We've told their stories. I mean, great. Do you think that's going to help them? No. What, what I'm saying is he is 6% ahead. Okay? Single digits. The, single digits. Why? Because everybody's focusing on the personal attack. People aren't focusing on the issues that matter to the voters. But obviously, Dude. these issues don't matter perhaps as much, just like a debate doesn't matter as much. The people are pretty much set on who they're going to vote for. You know this. It's going to change, you know, a vote or two. But that, that, bait, that bait could be kind of pivotal. I mean, if, if people had doubts about Fetterman, then that... I don't know. It's, it's 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 how much they know about the story of his stroke and how how much they know about what to expect from someone who's had a stroke. He 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 did well if you know all of the surrounding circumstances. If you are a low information voter, you might have looked at that debate and thought Fetterman did badly. They're going, oh, look, Fetterman's not fit, you know, for office. He's going to read this. And then the people that love him are going to say, we have no problem with that. He's doing really good. He's going to be better. He'll be great by the time. Because this is the seat. 
that could determine the balance of power in the Senate. So it, I don't think the debate, sadly, is going to matter tonight. And Fetterman did what it, it is doing in a sense. Six what chat said, 69. Said, Look, I'm, I'm Six chat 69. Thank you for being here. You live in sexual anarchy. Not as bright, not as great at debates, etc. But I think the Wait, debate will affect. though with your percentages, because I, I want people to really understand. So last hour, we looked at several polls. We do the, the politics average on that. Mm -hmm. um, Fetterman's up by one percentage point. Mm -hmm. And CBS News battleground tracker poll, Pennsylvania Senate contest narrows. This is just from a few hours ago. Um, the most recent polling has them at barely two, just under two. And that... Uh, Fetterman was up by five points last month. So, yeah, the, I, I don't see six anywhere. I know you can find an outlier, but that gets averaged in, and it's 2% or under. It is squeaky tight, Leslie. Uh, and I think, I, his, and I think his health does matter. Yeah. If he can't do the job, he can't do the job. It's do you think not it matters that he'll need a monitor? Well, yeah, we got we got to run. Yeah. But I will say I think a lot of voters are going to say, I'm not voting for the guy who lets murderers out of prison. And is the re I don't know what poll... I don't know what poll she cited. Tones, you're way behind. I did that. I did that on the. That was before you were even a fan of the Troll Patrol. I played that video of her talking about uh, getting like grease on people's dick. Oh, that's not the one you were talking about where she was talking about eating like. Egg and bacon sandwich or something, then giving head. <laughs> and then you're gonna put that in your pussy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking, fucking Cardi's awesome. Yeah, I feel like that was early on in the Troll Patrol. RCP has Oz at plus 2.6. I didn't. The poll I saw, saw earlier today had Fetterman at six. So, like, I know what the Democratic strategist was talking about. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know what Faulkner pulled up there. But, I mean, she, what, did she go to Breitbart or some shit? <laughs> oh, fuck. This is an important election, though. I know they always say it's the most important election of our lifetimes. Uh, slavery is on the ballot for voters in five U.S. states. More than 150 years after slaves were freed in the U.S., voters in five states will soon decide whether to close loopholes that led to the proliferation of a different form of slavery, forced labor by people convicted of certain crimes. None of the proposals would force immediate changes inside the state's prisons, though they could lead to legal challenges related to how they use prison labor, a lasting imprint of slavery's legacy on the entire United States. The effort is uh, part of a national push to amend the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that banned enslavement or involuntary servitude except as a form of criminal punishment. That exception has long permitted the exploitation of labor by convicted felons. You know, this is an issue I'm very passionate about. It was a CNN poll. Thank you, Mox. Nearly 20 states have uh, constitutions that include language permitting slavery and involuntary servitude as criminal punishments. In 2018, Colorado was the first to remove the language from its founding frameworks by ballot measure, followed by Nebraska and Utah. Two years later, Utah is kind of surprising, but hell yeah. This November, versions of the question go before voters in Alabama, Louisiana, Oregon, Tennessee, and Vermont. Senator Ramesh Akbari, a Democrat from Memphis, was shocked when a fellow lawmaker told her about the slavery exception in the Tennessee Constitution and immediately began working to replace the language. When I found out that this exception existed, I thought we've got to fix this. We've got to fix this right away. Our Constitution should reflect the values and the beliefs of our state. Constitutions require lengthy and, technical, trickly, and technically tricky steps before they can be tweaked. Akbari first proposed changes in 2019. The GOP-dominated General Assembly then had to pass the changes by a majority vote in one two-year legislative period and then pass it again within at least two-thirds approval in the next. The amendment could then go on the ballot in the year of the next gubernatorial election. Fuck. A lot of hoops there, but hey. 
Latino voters have some worries about Biden's scary policies. Biden's scary policies. Come on, man. We're going to watch a focus group on Fox News talking about Biden's scary Some policies only 17 days away and not Democrats high enough for the shit control of congress have gone from bad to worse one of the reasons they've struggled is because they keep pushing radical policies that alienate the average day american and one group that democrats continue to take for granted is the hispanic community so i went to miami florida i mean my god this is like any semblance of news and they used to, is this in the nine o'clock hour in the morning like, during the day, they used to have some semblance of being a news organization and did news and had a halfway decent news department. But when you're coming in and framing it as the reason Democrats have dropped is because of their radical policies they've been pushing, you have dropped any pretext of being an impartial, fair and balanced news organization. You are straight up propaganda at that point. Shep left a long time ago. Chris Wallace. And spoke to a group of Hispanic voters about what's driving them to the polls and away from the Democratic Party. Watch. What's the number one issue facing you and your family today? The economy. No, no, no. I mean, like, it, it, until, like, 20 fucking 16, 2017 time, during the Trump years, that's when Fox really started ditching any pretext of being news during the day. During the day, they had a semi-decent news department. I can even show you pieces they have produced. They, they had a, a piece on a, a trans girl in California uh, just a few weeks back. And it was incredibly uh, woke, <laughs> as the kids called it. Some of the right-wingers got upset with Fox News over it. But it was, it, was, it was during their actual news broadcast, not their commentary. But I mean, even up till 2020, they had one of the best election coverage departments. That was the reason why they had the call on Arizona first. That dude that ran their election department was one of the absolute best in the country and had been there for fucking 20 years or something. And, then, and they fired him because he was right. They got the call before any other station and it pissed, it pissed their viewers off. That cracks me up. They delivered the news faster and correctly to their viewers. And their viewers punished them for it. He lost his job. Yes, the dude that ran Fox's election coverage lost his job. <laughs> Over getting it right. Over calling Arizona right. The fired Fox News editor who was part of the network. And look at the fucking stocks. God damn, what's going on? The fired Fox News editor who was part of the network's Arizona election call for Biden says he became the target of murderous rage from viewers. So the Fox News political editor, Chris uh, Steyerwalt, and he testified in front of January 6th, was fired January 19th. Dyer Walt was part of Fox's decision to call Arizona for Biden on November 3rd. He said conservative viewers were furious and he became the target of their murderous rage. Better at it than anyone else and still got fired. And by the and by the people that are like supposedly the party of personal responsibility that talk about how, you know, we're a meritocracy and people are where they're where they're uh, where they're supposed to be because of, of, of uh, their talents. In fucking saying the facts don't care about your feelings crowd. Got upset that the facts conflicted with their feelings. 
And it's all because like Fox News didn't do a good job of telling their viewers the truth about the election. And by God, they're not doing a good job right now. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, I hope that bowl was clean. They're not doing a good job now. They have their viewers convinced there is a, a bloodbath coming for Democrats. And that's almost certainly not going to materialize. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be more of a few slices here and there. They're, they might quite possibly lose the House, but they're probably going to gain in the Senate. So what happens when that happens and their viewers were expecting a bloodbath and we get a split government instead? And they're not going to be prepared for it. They're going to think they're going to think, you know, Fetterman cheated. Tim Ryan cheated if he wins. Man, I had a right winger the other day present an article to me and I was and he was one of Rob Nowhere's fans. He presented an article to me that said that MSNBC and CNN viewers are less informed than people who watch no news at all. That's what the art, it was from a right wing outlet. And that's all it said. And I said, you know what? That, that article is 100% correct. And I know the study it's referencing. What it didn't tell you, what it didn't tell you was that Fox News viewers were far less informed than MSNBC and CNN viewers. And that people that watched NPR and or listened to NPR and watched The Daily Show were far more informed than people who consumed nothing at all. No, the study was correct. People who watched uh, MSNBC and CNN were less informed than if they consumed no news at all. I believe it. But Fox News was far worse. And in the study, people that watched The Daily Show and listened to NPR were the most informed. And I was like, that is how right-wingers do dishonesty. What you said was factually correct, but there was more to the story. Skylar Thompson coming in here, like, saying something incredibly fucking stupid. (laughs) What's up, Skylar? First of all, can we not use mentally ill as an insult? And there are numerous mental illness... I think most people are somewhere on the spectrum of some mental illness. There's we're some shade of something in the DSM. So I think anyone who uh, comes in here and uses mental illness as an insult is an absolutely abhorrent person. What do you think about that? Ha <laughs> ha! Right wingers are morons though, so what would I expect from them? That's the first thing wrong with what the fuck you said. Anyway, back to this is a focus group of Latinos who are going to tell you what uh, they think about Biden's policies. By the way, Latinos do tend to be more conservative, but these are specifically Fox News viewers. The economy and my... I fear for my, my grandchildren. The violence in schools and all, it's, it's everywhere. Oh, getting gunned down in schools? Yeah, you, you should. Miami and a cafecito that used to be maybe a dollar fifty is now $3. And you see it everywhere. It's just that clear. Yeah. And so I, I would say that too. And it's also that we're seeing how this administration and the policies they're pursuing are so similar, starkly similar to the policies that they have in places like Cuba and Venezuela and Nicaragua where our families fled from. So that's what's scary. Maritza. The fuck are you talking about? You have to be incredibly uninformed to look around here at this late stage capitalist hellscape and say this is like the Cuban revolution. What the fuck? I'd say the same, the economy. And it's so funny because when I, when I heard her, her say the grandkids, that's foremost in my mind because I just 
I have two now, one born July 4th. And I looked at him and I thought, Are you worried that your grandkids are going to get gunned down in schools because we won't do anything about our gun laws? That is a legitimate worry. Or are you worried a drag queen might read to your grandkids? I want to know what it is exactly. And by the way, uh, remember kids. Oh, hold on. Wrong one. Speaking of which, we have a manifesto from the school shooter yesterday. He was apparently an incel. So once again, this is just early reports. Things may come to light. But it seems he had a note that he left in his car and he was an incel. But remember, kids, shoot up drugs, not schools. More fun for everybody. Now, what is it you are, are scared of with your grandkids? Is there going to be socialism when, you, when you're when you growing up? And I won't be here, but what can I do? What can I do now? When I won't be here, I have to leave something for them. And it scares me. It scares me what that's going to be like. My concerns are for my children. Mm. Very similar to Maria. The violence in school. The there, yes, that. I mean, it's hard for the... For the children, with everything that's going on, learning off of a computer, it's just been challenging for everybody. Carlos, you voted for Obama twice, and you voted for Trump twice. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel the Biden administration? Did, did, did you, uh, they're going back? Did you activate the no cussing? What's going on here, Mox? Do I have to, do I have to, do I have to turn the, the clock on? I didn't, I didn't see anybody activate that. They're undoing what Trump did for us. And it's, to, it's sad to see. Yeah, but that's supposed to be the reset the clock when I'm on no profanity and I cussed. You're an independent voter. You're you can't abuse it. Democrat. Yes, and then I, I, I was a Republican. Yeah. Then I became a Democrat. Yeah. But right now, I'm questioning my, my, um, my political... Um, Thinking. Ideology. Yes. Yes. You watch Fox News. Administration doing as it relates to the economy. As to the economy, it's not doing that good. As to immigration, it's going. It's doing really bad. Let's talk about that. That's a perfect segue. How, how much? How Biden much time doing? do I have to talk? <laughs> Sweetheart, you can talk as long as you want. <laughs> How's the Biden administration doing as it relates to the? These guys know Frank Luntz. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, the economy is bad. And then people are coming in from other countries and it's just filling up and filling up. And I don't know where we're going with this, you know? Now, this is in Florida. They've got so many immigrants coming in that they had to take, they had to take and pay for immigrants from Texas in order to send them on behalf of Florida to Martha's Vineyard. When asked about this, Ron DeSantis said, well, they're only coming in like onesies and twosies. It's such a huge problem. I wish you people could learn to feel embarrassment. Trump started the wall. Mm-hmm. You support then, the wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then now... You're in Florida. You can't build a fucking wall around Florida. I mean, everybody's coming through. I think I speak for everyone here. All of us, they're either immigrants or our families are immigrants. So we support an immigration process that's legal and orderly and all this stuff. But what we're seeing at the border just doesn't make any sense. How are you going to have two, over two million people already crossing the border? Those are the people that we know. What about the people we don't know? And I think it's very easy for Joe Biden, who lives in a mansion in Delaware, to talk about that. But those people, they come to our neighborhoods, right? And so I think that's what's... Sir... I've seen Joe Biden's house. It's not a mansion. Of all the politicians, it's just like, it's just like fucking Bernie Sanders. Of all the politicians to accuse of being loaded. Like, really, Joe Biden? Like, that's that's been his appeal is that he's just like an everyday fuck, right? Like, he's kind of down to earth. Joe Biden's house is not some McMansion. You might live in a bigger house than he does. I assure you, kiddo. It's making a lot of people, um really change in our community. People that I know that were Democrats or maybe they voted for Biden now have buyer's remorse. I think Actually, the White House is a dump if you didn't What's know. Happening? 
It's old and they, they got a rat problem and shit. And you know, in every emergency, the first thing you oh, do... Fair enough. Fair enough. It is pretty big. Stop the bleeding first. And I think that's where we have to start. I think Trump attempted that. But now it's like taking that off and letting the bleeding has begun again. And, and we need to put a stop and then see how we're going to treat these people that are here now. What are we going to do now? But we can't lose control that way because we are a society and we can't take in two million people and put them out in, into society and have them have perfect, perfect lives. Everyone's going to live perfectly. You can't assimilate. Fair enough, like an old mansion. People in such a short amount of time. Carlos, you hear these conversations as someone that has voted for both political parties. How do you feel about the Democratic Party, how they're handling immigration right now? Oh, uh, yeah, they're dropping the ball. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, what's I don't understand why, <clears throat> excuse me, why uh, having a border became a bad thing. When did that become a bad thing? Every country has a border. Every country. What in the fuck are these people talking about? I am so tired. I personally, I believe that you should not be able to to impede a free person's movement. No matter. I'm sure any American be like, I can go move to France if I wanted to. They would think they're entitled to be able to do that, or they'd be able. To, uh, I I feel I can go move to to Japan if I want to. They won't let you, by the way, in Japan. Uh, I don't think you can restrict a free people's movement. But I am in the minority on that one. I am, and even 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 if I had my wishes and I could wave a wand and things be exactly the way I wanted policy wise, there would still be some sort of border that you're passing through, even though you can totally totally come on, I'm down with you coming in, there's still going to be like a border check with a customs agent and shit. Even in my utopia where everybody can come and go freely as they please. And that is far from what is happening right now. I, I don't like... And they always use record... Uh, enforcements against immigrants. See, we, we've done record arrests. Doesn't that mean the border's not closed or not open? That it's very much closed? You keep arresting people that come over the border? And you're, you're apparently doing a good job at doing it. What the fuck? They are. They're just... It's wild that Fox News does this piece where it's clear they've gone out and gotten Fox News viewers to come in and just regurgitate what Fox News has told them. This, and this is definitely not like Frank Luntz would have done a, a great one of these. If he does all kinds of them for Vice. And he's a, he's a right-wing political scumbag hack. But like at least if you were watching him conduct one of these you know, asking people how they feel is going to be a good sample and he's going to ask some excellent fucking questions. Reinforces it. We, for some reason, don't want to do it. I don't understand. Uh, Trump at least put the border there. Doesn't want to enforce it. Record number of enforcements under Biden. Decide that people like you have no compassion. What do you tell them? I'm from immigrants. <laughs> like, how, how are you going to tell me? <laughs> like, we are all come from immigrants. It's a country of immigrants. Up yours, Wolf. It's not, about, it's not that I don't have we'll compassion. See who's it's just, canceled. it's who common sense. Know. That's it. Plain and simple. Do you worry about, and, and you hear this from a lot of Hispanic and Latino voters, that their fear for the socialism, is that a concern of yours? Oh, yeah. Uh, my parents are from Ecuador, and we had a little bit of about with socialism uh we luckily got out of it but yeah it was it was a concern and yeah we uh, uh, people from the about with socialism we know about it and we don't like it the themes of socialism free 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 does that concern you it really does uh... free 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 once again even the 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 fox news host leading questions Socialism means free, free, free. You, you're wanting them to say a certain thing, aren't you, buddy? I can, I can tell. 
And like you always hear, I saw this meme the other day and I, I wish I had saved it. Meme, I don't know, it was a response. You always hear about like, oh, they, they seized my grandparents' house. And then this person in Cuba was like, huh, that's weird. This is a picture of my grandparents' house that I, I still live in to this day. It's still been in the family. Like, was there something special about your grandparents' house? <laughs> and uh, there is, by the way. <laughs> there always is if you, if you go down through it. Um, I'll tell you what, Lawrence. All of us, we have some family member who's had suffered through socialists. Uh, personally, my family is from Cuba. What they had to suffer and endure, and what they're suffering and enduring now, which I think I mentioned, I saw it personally. It's just horrible, and it's on paper. Buddy, buddy, the suffering they're enduring now is because they are embargoed from the rest of the goddamn world. And my God, I have there is there is some talent and intelligence on the island of fucking Cuba that we are squandering. They are on par with our healthcare system and they've done it being cut off from the rest of the goddamn world. Let me repeat that again. Their healthcare returns are on par with us. That speaks to how bad the U.S. healthcare returns are. But that's amazing for an island that has been completely cut off from the rest of the world for what now? 60 fucking years? Almost 60 years? Produces some of the best cigars in the world, some of the best rum on a tiny, tiny fucking island with minimal resources. They send their doctors to disasters all across the world because they have some fantastic fucking doctors. Buddy, the suffering of the Cuban people now is 100% inflicted on the island by the United States. Fuck off, man. And don't don't tell me you know more about it because your family came from Cuba. You live in a delusional fucking world. It might seem like a good idea, but in practice, it's not. We are all individuals. So you cannot expect a group of individuals to all think the same, act the same, be the same. It's just not feasible. Socialism, always you always think... It didn't work over there because they didn't do it right. Right. <laughs> Buddy, the irony of what you just said. The irony of what you just said. All of you think exactly the same goddamn thing. Do you hear yourself? Every single person in this room has the exact same political beliefs. Always, you always think... It didn't work over there because they didn't. Oh no no no! I didn't go back far enough. Feasible. Socialism always. You always think. I really didn't go back for it. Damn. It's not. We are all individuals, so you cannot expect a group of individuals to all think the same, act the same, be the same. It's just not feasible. Socialism. And is you literally described every Fox viewer? You all think the same and they get so upset with me like when we get some right wing callers and yes I'm short with them I'm quick to call them dumb fucks but if they're just saying the same thing I watch here on the show on Fox News what good is it if they're just regurgitating what well, and that's all they can do that's all they can do because right wingers are morons I guess I got to show more patience with them and try to talk them out of it. That's the new debating them is not is not good content because they're all just going to say the same shit. I got to deprogram them, don't I? That's that's more intensive. That's not as fun for me. I like calling people dumb fucks. I'm gonna have to deprogram them. It takes time. It takes patience, and I ain't got it. Always, you always think it didn't work over there because they didn't do it right. Right. <laughs> 
They didn't know how to do it right. Over there, no, no. They yeah. didn't know it. We're going to know. We're going to know how to do it right. No. Because humanity is humanity. Mm -hmm. And all these things factor in. And it might be nice for a year, but five years from now, no. Five years later, but, but, it's miserable. Everybody's miserable. Then what does that mean? What do you think socialism means? What are we talking about socializing? It, it, it makes zero sense what you're saying if you know what these words mean and you have an understanding of economic systems. I'm not following what you're, you're wanting, ma'am. Everybody's the same, mm -hmm. but no one has anything. Mm -hmm. And no one's happy, and everyone's miserable. Strong words. That's what from, socialism uh, means. Of the focus group later in the show. I fucking, I don't know. I don't know. They have no grasp on reality. Sorry. At the top. Now we did this story last night. We talked about some of the drop boxes that were being guarded by armed soldiers in Arizona, because I really wanted to highlight that, because that was scary to me. CNN, with the scoop here, they got a woman that actually went up and confronted the motherfuckers that are protecting, protecting the drop boxes. So, totally into it, Anderson Cooper, let's, uh, let's watch this video. Out the program, we told you about a new assessment from a top Homeland Security official describing the threat environment ahead of the midterm elections as, quote, incredibly heightened. Also just in, Arizona Secretary of State tonight says she's sent additional reports of uh, what uh, they call multiple, uh, excuse me, potential voter intimidation to the state's attorney general's office and the, fe and the federal justice department. Now, we should point out the Secretary of State, Katie Hobbs, is the Democrat running for governor in the state. In any event, the new alleged incidents come in addition to the one that got so much attention over the weekend. CNN's Kyung La has more. Outside an early ballot drop box in Mesa, Arizona, two men armed, wearing tactical gear, watching voters. A vigil taking place over multiple nights. Hi, guys. One woman, a Phoenix area grandmother, decided to confront them. Okay. Hey, don't touch oh. Oh. Why did you decide to go out there? I'm standing up and pushing back against those people and standing up. Okay, for those of you listening to the podcast and just to, just to make sure we all know what we, we saw, sh they had their license plate, these, these indescript people who are almost certainly on the side of uh, a right-wing militia group or some shit. They had their license plate blocked by an American flag, and she just went up and yanked the flag away and took a picture of their license plate. Ballot drop box in Mesa, Arizona. Two men armed, wearing tactical... I love her already. Voters. A vigil taking place over multiple nights. Hi, guys. One woman, a Phoenix area grandmother, decided to confront them. Okay. Hey, don't touch oh. them. Why did you decide to go out there? I'm standing up and pushing back against those people and standing up for everybody's right to vote. You don't mind if I set up right here, do you? Without fear of uh, retaliation or any kind of intimidation. Hi, how are you? She asked we you? not show her face because she did this. Went right up in the armed man's face. You know, I, I don't talk. I, I take care of business. I go out there and I do what I have to do. Nice to meet you. I push Hi. back against uh, these kind of people, people who are intimidating voters. You know, he's putting that in my face. I'm sitting down. He's with a gun standing over top of me. And I'm standing up and pushing back against those people and standing up for everybody's right to vote without fear of uh, retaliation or any kind of intimidation. I'm just sitting here. I'm not even communicating with them. I'm sitting right here. You know, seeing that, you would think you were in, you know, some autocratic nation and not the United States of America. Two outdoor ballot drop boxes in Maricopa County have become an election flashpoint. Around the clock, so-called ballot watchers are camped out. Late Sunday night, we saw this group of women at the same drop box. You're not supposed to talk to anybody? Not going to. Thank you. They didn't want to talk. 
at another drop box in downtown Phoenix. They're photographing voters. And already, these actions are impacting how voters feel. Fucking shit. Held and referred to the Department of Justice last week. One voter complained he was called a mule. That's a reference to a conspiracy movie that spread lies about the 2020 election. I'm talking about people who have spread lies. To Maricopa County Board Supervisor Bill Look, Gates, a I'm Republican who has who defended has the election process, two years of lies have come to this. Why are you in camouflage? From, from what, how, how's that going to keep people from seeing you? You're in a parking lot. We're really losing rationality and logic here. Arizona has lived through the discredited partisan review of Maricopa County. Buddy, buddy, I like, I, do you understand what it's like reaching adulthood in the year 2001? <laughs> we've, we've long gone past rationality and it's been my entire adult life. And it's, it's saying to me, like most peaceful time in history, most prosperous time in history through the nineties. Then Justin reaches adulthood and everything just goes to shit. <sighs> As a conservative, it's getting harder and harder to not look like a kook. You motherfuckers have looked like kooks for fucking years. County's 2020 ballots. And now Republicans on the midterm ballot, like gubernatorial nominee Kerry Lake, are raising doubts about this November's election before a single vote has even been counted. I'm afraid that it probably is not going to be completely fair. I wish I could sit here and say I have complete faith in this system. I don't have faith in this system. We begin to look at defining fence. I hate Republican it here. Republican Secretary of State nominee Mark Fincham I mean, urged followers on social media to watch said. all drop boxes and made a conspiracy reference to Democratic donor George Soros. This is why we have- Oh a my God. These, start, these sort of confrontations. It's been normalized in some way over the past few years, but we're not gonna normalize it here in Maricopa County. I encourage people, let's take the temperature down. Can't allow Go arrest snap, those right? fucks for voter intimidation. He's now weighed in on these incidents as well. Uh, he says that basically this doesn't meet a threshold for a crime. He was specifically asked, uh, what can you do about this? And he says he's going to expend resources. I can see two sheriff's uh, patrol vehicles sitting nearby. They are keeping watch on this. There are undercover deputies here as well. But that there is a right to bear arms here in Arizona. And the tactical gear, while he considers it very unfortunate, it is clothing of their choosing. And what is still happening out here, Anderson, is this is the box over my right shoulder, very innocuous. We are seeing people vote, but this is still continuing. You can see these folks on these lawn chairs. It doesn't appear any of this particular group is armed. That's usually when the sun comes down that uh, people here and deputies here have told us that they show up. The sheriff did say that he's working with the Department of Justice to see if any of this might be impeding the vote and if this is a violation of a federal crime. One thing I should add, Anderson, is that a lawsuit has been filed by a, a couple of activist groups and organizations seeing if they do actually believe that this is a violation of civil rights of a voter and hoping to stop this. Hmm. Anderson? King Law, appreciate it. Thanks. I, I guess that's on the federal level. It's up to the federal level to decide. There's not a state law that applies. They said it doesn't meet the burden of a crime. Go from Arizona to Florida. From the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> There's now a protest ban at a Florida, at Florida University, not a Florida University, at Florida University, the University of Florida, going to start enforcing a decades old prohibition against indoor protests following a raucous demonstration earlier this month against the selection of U.S. Senator Ben Sass as a finalist for the school's president job. Sass, a Republican in his second Senate term, has drawn criticism from some, uh, for some at the school for his opposition to same-sex marriage. Like a violation of the First Amendment to me, the current university president, Ken Fuck, 
said Monday in a letter to University Community that a protest at a forum where SAS was taking questions on October 10th made it difficult to hear the Nebraska Senator's responses as demonstrators were banging their fists on windows, walls, and furniture. Sounds like their First Amendment right to me. Because of the demonstration involving 1,000 protesters, the discussion had to be moved online and shortened. While the university supports the First Amendment right to free speech, with this commitment comes an obligation to protect the rights of everyone in our community to speak and to hear. Yeah, like, they don't want their, uh, their tuition fees. You have, you have treated the university system like it is a product. They do not want their tuition fees, which they are consumers. They are consumers of your university. That is the way you have sold it to them, that you are providing them a service. They don't want their money to go to a bigot. Simple as that. FSU is better at football, aren't they? I'm just, I'm just saying. The regulation against protests inside campus buildings has been on the books for two decades, but it wasn't enforced in recent years because protesters were respectful of others and their rights to speak and to hear. Fox said, "Yeah, I'm calling them Fox. It's Fuchs, Fuchs, Fuchs. I don't know. F-U-C-H-S, Fox." Policy will be enforced next week when the school's board of trustees meets to consider SAS's candidacy. The students who violate it may be subject to discipline. If you thought that was bad, let me tell you about something else that's going on in a school that's going to piss you off. I might need a content warning for this one. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't worthy of a content warning. I'm just assuming they're going to say something stupid. New controversy arises surrounding the race of Oklahoma superintendent. The Tulsa World reported that if elected, Republican Ryan Walters would have teachers undergo patriotic education. Jess, in the past, Republican Ryan Walters has said that too often students here in Oklahoma are being taught U.S. history inaccurately. He argues this idea could help reverse that trend, but his opponent, the Democrat, Gina Nelson, calls the plan bizarre. They are now advocating that our students are not taught history, but instead are taught indoctrination, that are instead taught that this country is an evil place full of bigoted racists. According to the Tulsa World, Secretary of Education Ryan Walters told a crowd of GOP supporters that every teacher in Oklahoma needs to undergo training from Hillsdale College. He says he's been through the training and it would ensure teachers know the basics or what he calls true history. What we have to have is true history taught in schools. Our kids need to know about the founding. They need to know this country was founded on Judeo-Christian values. They need to know about the Constitution. Buddy. Buddy. The first thing you said was flat faults. The the second thing you said is is proven wrong if you'd actually read the fucking document. The first thing you said is proven wrong if you'd read the document you reverence and say, God damn. They need to be inspired by heroes like George Washington. Walters contends this idea is about ensuring history is accurately taught in a patriotic way. His opponent, Gina Nelson, argues this idea raises red flags, accusing Walters of being a puppet, suggesting he has improper ties to the Christian college. Both Nelson and Walters argue they want to support teachers, but it's obvious it, they, they disagree on what that support should look like. Specifically, voters will have... I thought he was a candidate, and apparently he is a candidate for the state uh, education secretary. But it would they referred to him as the current the current uh, education secretary. Now some were Christians, I mean, and like most of those you don't know their fucking names. <laughs> 
there were Christians. They, it was a, just like now, it was a diverse swath of, of different beliefs. But it was not founded on Judeo-Christian values. I just, I fucking hate that. Remember when Bryson was on, we got into the argument about, like, Thomas Jefferson was, was more on the agnostic side. But he, like, wanted to focus in, like, I have um, the Christian faith. Like, there's a quote, he just wanted to focus in on that one thing and not, like, the paragraph surrounding it that put everything into context. And I had to go read from Monticello about the fucking, uh, the beliefs of Thomas Jefferson. And he still fucking denied it. Just because that one line, I'm of the Christian faith or some shit like that. I, I'm, I'm misquoting it. Fuck me. Speaking of, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Wrong segue. Candace Owens is going to tell us about why uh, Taylor Swift uh, is horrible at music. Apparently. Oh, modern art is really, really bad. It's awful, actually. It's not art at all. What it really is is, is a tremendous effort from journalists to convince you that dog sh is food. That's really what's happened now. So for as one, as just one example, the Guggenheim Museum in New York City once featured a porcelain urinal. Yeah. How's that for art? Imagine you're walking around a museum and you see a porcelain urinal. Now you'd expect okay. reasonably that any honest person would write an article about that and say, this is bad, this is awful. What is happening to art? But no, leave it to journalists. This is actually a- No, no, I'm sure there's a story behind the urinal. I'm sure the artist had a message that was portrayed with that urinal. Now what that message was and whether you agree with it or not, are two different things, but maybe you should show the piece and tell us what the artist's intent was. Because it maybe they didn't tell you. Maybe maybe they're more of a subversive kind of artist. But more than likely, there's a plaque that's going to have you know their intent the accompanying the piece. So maybe you should do that. Quotation from Daily Art magazine about that porcelain urinal. It says, "Quote." You will be pleasantly surprised how a toilet can literally have a deep meaning. It literally cannot, but it doesn't matter because journalists are just saying stuff nowadays. They just say stuff and they tell you basically not to believe your own eyes. Trust us, don't believe your own eyes, don't believe your own ears. We will tell you what's good and what is bad and typically what we're trying to explain- That is exactly what you are doing with your audience right now by being selective about the piece that you're, I'm sure they had an argument for why the piece of art was deep. But you're not telling that to your audience, are you, Candace? You're being dishonest. To you is that bad is good, which brings me to music. That seems to be something. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're just leaving the urinal alone. No, no context. It's not. I talk often about Cardi B, but there are some other artists that we should discuss. And I, I describe these artists as too big to fail. You know, the banks were too big to fail in 08 and they were like, oh, it's okay. We're just going to pretend everything's fine, but it wasn't fine at all. Well, there are certain artists who started and they were tremendously talented. And then they got so big that no matter what they do or what they produce, all of the journalists tell you it's amazing. One such artist is Beyonce. Beyonce recently dropped her seventh studio album. It was called, entitled Renaissance, and it was anything but a renaissance. It was horrible. It was a bad album. If you don't believe me, all you had to do was check the comments of any individual who heard her album on Twitter. The whole community, black community said, this is just not her best work. It's not good, but it doesn't matter because the journalists have to do their job and tell you that it's Beyonce, and everything she does turns into sprinkles and rainbows and shame on you if you don't see that. This is a, a real New York Times headline about that album, ready? It's New York Times, America has a problem and Beyonce ain't it. That's the title of the article. The article goes on to describe Renaissance. I'm sure, I'm sure this is on the front page, album. by the way. She finds escape, rebirth, community, pleasure and control in decades of dance music steeped in black queer bravado, whatever that is. Pitchfork, another magazine, went on to describe it. B 
be ma'am ma'am there are whole scenes that have popped up around drag queens and and the trans community uh doing these dance beats and shit you know nothing about music and that's why you didn't get the reference uh, like there was a there was a whole uh, ordeal a few years ago with uh, with Kesha being accused of ripping off big. Oh, I forgot her name, and I looked her up. She's amazing, but she's this queer artist in New Orleans that had this 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 amazing run, and people have been stealing her beats and making big hits with it and or, or with them and. She's not getting the credit for it. I, I, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. that but I would assume that the black community, Big Frida. Yes. And she's amazing. Or they are amazing. I don't know what their, their uh, pronouns are. I, I think she. Beyonce's seventh album is not just a pop star's immaculate dance record, but a rich celebration of club music and its sweaty, emancipatory spirit. Ah, must be true. They're obviously just pulling adjectives out of a hat. It's sweaty. It's queer. It's bravado. They literally described the dance clubs throughout the 80s and 90s. I can tell you the different waves of drugs. They were sweaty because people were like in the 80s doing coke and fucking each other. And it's, it smelled like lube and, and, and poop because of all the gay sex that was going on. Ma'am, there, there have been books written about this culture that you know nothing about. But yet you're like, I'm confused as to what she's talking about. Yeah, I know what the, what the columnist is talking about because I'm up on that culture. Just because you don't understand it doesn't make it wrong. No, oh, it's emancipatory. Well, if you said it, it must be true. And even though I'm not enjoying this album at all, I'll pretend to enjoy it because I guess she's too big to fail. So we just allow her to drop a really bad album, but never call it objectively bad. So is the circumstance when it comes to Taylor Swift. Just like Beyonce, she hasn't had a good studio album in a while. The last two or three Taylor Swift albums have been objectively. I didn't like the last one, but the one she, I think she has a new one, but I liked the, I liked the rework one that she, she dropped. So like a fucking, like there's been a lot of releases cause she's been like redoing some of her old albums and and taking the power away from the record companies which is fucking based as shit but like uh, a couple albums ago i really liked several songs off of it like i i, I thought she did a really good job it was pre-pandemic though but i'm not and i really liked like the 10 minute version of the song about the i didn't think i would like that song at all and that was really fucking good she did it on snl instead of having like two musical performances she had one in the middle and it was that 10 minute fucking song and it's really fucking good i've listened to that multiple times didn't think i would like a song like that but the, you can't you you can't deny the woman's talent and the fact that she's like selling out stadiums now good for her and i like that she's swinging her dick around and trying to break up the industry monopoly very bad but she does not know that because no one tells her that and whatever she produces they just pretend that it's another layer of taylor that we're peeling back like an onion and that might be true we're peeling back the layer that's really bad and it stinks that's where we're at <laughs> taylor swift's music is not good she just dropped an album she that thought about that nice. all night and before i tell you about the album i want you to hear taylor swift describe the album to you take a listen Track three, Antihero, is one of my favorite songs um, I've ever written. I really don't think I've delved this far into my insecurities in this detail. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, you guys won't hear it, but I will. Oh, yeah. Anti-hero is what we're going for here. Hey, Swifty. Antihero. 
anti-hero. Oh, I gotta switch. I gotta switch the output here. Oh, this ain't bad. I can get into this. Okay, okay. This is catchy as fuck. Sorry, I just wanted I just wanted a frame of reference there. Sorry you guys couldn't hear it. I'll go back and listen to that. Or, um, you know, I struggle a lot with the idea that, you know, my life has become unmanageably um, sized and that I, you know, not to sound too dark, but like I just struggle with the idea of like not feeling like a person. Um, <laughs> like, don't feel bad for me. You don't need to. But, you know, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Really is, a, is a real guided tour throughout. But I can totally understand that feeling that you're you're. You yourself are the art, and you're always on, and it, it, you're not really living alive. I totally understand that. All the, you know, things I tend to hate about myself. We all hate things about ourselves. And, um, and it's all of those aspects I was muted. things we dislike and like about ourselves that we have to come to terms with if we're going to, like, be this person. So, uh, yeah, I like Antihero a lot because I think it's really honest. So, mumble oh, catchy as fuck. Nothing she said there made any sense, and the album doesn't make any sense, and the lyrics don't make any sense, but she's Taylor Swift, so I don't know. We're supposed to pretend that what she just said was magical, that the lyrics are magical. And she dropped a song, I guess the main song that she wants featured and that she's speaking about is Anti Hero, like you just heard her describe. It's the lead single. I don't think that was the main they song. Describe as true self loathing, and it ticks off Swift's deepest insecurities. And it kicks off with this line, I have this thing where I get older, but just never wiser. Okay, I'm going to just read you some of these lyrics, and you can listen to That was like the least played one, wasn't it? If you want to hear where she is at as an artist. But here, here it is. The hook, the chorus is, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. Oh, no, it's, it's the most played one. At tea time. Everybody agrees. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's just so not good that it's just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Ready? This is um, a couple of lyrics from the verse because it gets deeper. Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby. <laughs> and I'm a monster on the hill. Ah, uh, oh my gosh, that's so deep. Let me say that to you again. Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby. And I'm a monster on the hill. That is that is so relatable. I, I feel like that sometimes too. I don't I don't know what a sex baby is, neither do you, but I guess this is supposed to be deep and we're supposed to think about it. Of course, the journalists love to describe it as cryptic and there's some deep message that's in here. So if you're not getting it because you well, should Well, did the journalist highlight those lyrics specifically? We're not seeing how deep the porcelain urinal is, because this is porcelain urinal for music, right? More lyrics. But like, okay. <laughs> Cause like I hate it when people do this, like because like they'll talk about like comparing music from the '60s and shit. Like the Beatles wrote a song called "Ablu D Ablu Da." Fuck it, come the fuck on, seriously. I just like if you anything, like I'm not saying that the Beatles don't have some brilliant fucking lyrics, right? But they have some goddamn nonsense. And they have some other shit that sounds like nonsense, but when you get the context, when you hear the story behind it, it's not nonsense. You could take any piece of a lyric. That, that, that might have some fucking meaning somewhere to somebody. You can take any fucking piece of a lyric and take it out of context and be like, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Ablu D, Ablu Da doesn't make any fucking sense, Candace. Or whatever kind of music you listen to. Bluegrass? Are you part of the Sweet Baby Gang? You make Matt Walsh play you bluegrass? Eric's. I have this dream my daughter-in-law kills me for the money. She thinks I left them in the will. The family gathers round and reads it, and then someone screams out, 
She's laughing up at us from hell. I don't, I don't know what any, any of that means, but she jumps right back in, back into the deep chorus. It's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. It's me, hi. I'm the problem, it's me, hi, it's me, hi. Everybody agrees that this song sucks. So I just wanna bring it up because we are talking about how our culture is going down the drain in America. And of course, Hollywood is a big piece of this. We don't aspire towards art. We do My not- My God, are you- with them anymore. We don't produce- Tones with the callback to the Chumbawamba from earlier. And my God, if you weren't even here and don't even know, if you weren't here for me singing that during the debate with, with, with Fetterman, and you just happened to, to throw those lyrics out. And apparently, and apparently Chumbawamba is based as fuck and they're like a commie band. Oh my God, Tones, do you not under, oh shit, during the Fetterman debate. Fetterman kept saying, like, I get knocked down and I get back up again. And, like, fucking, I couldn't, I couldn't help but, you know, make the Chumbawamba jokes and shit and sing. So if you came in here and dropped those lyrics, that wasn't even a call back to fucking three or four hours ago. It's just some weird coincidence. Fuck off. Really? Ugh. <sighs> poetry but we have a bunch of people applauding the non-poetry she didn't she didn't do a good job she didn't do a good job of convincing me that taylor swift's music's not good but i would assume that she thinks kanye west's music is good and kanye west just a few hours ago apparently told tmz i think it was yeah told dmz who always gets the scoop that the claims that he made the backlash that he got for the claims that he made proves that he was right. Talk about the Jewish comment. It's actually proven the exact point that I made. That's Kanye West spouting a classic anti-Semitism deflection that any criticism of their bigotry is proof that their argument is correct. It's a tactic that was employed by Hitler himself, so you could say Kanye's kind of doing a remix here. He's at Warner Bros. Uh, and he comes outside, he holds a news conference, and he says that Jewish people are in control. I'm sorry, I was expecting the actual clip, but it's it's the TMZ talking kind of thing. But okay, we'll go with it. Control the media, control of Hollywood. So I'm probably gonna get copyright claim on this. I should have played the Taylor Swift song. You got people like Ari Emanuel asking people to not do business with me. That's how this town has been running for so, so long. They'll mute you. They'll try to mute you at all costs. They're afraid of us not being afraid anymore. Also not afraid are the trolls who crawled out of their hidey holes to echo Kanye's sentiments over the weekend. There are people in LA who hang these banners over the 405 saying Kanye West is right about the Jews. Giving Nazi salutes. Meanwhile, Kanye's refusal to retract his pretty fucked up. have caused his new business attorney, Camille Vasquez to drop him and celebrities to condemn him, including Chloe, Kendall, Chris, and even Kim, who posted, Hate speech is never okay or excusable. I stand together with the Jewish community and call on the terrible violence and hateful rhetoric towards them to come to an immediate end. The point is, people who dismiss his hate speech as just Kanye being Kanye might want to think again. There are dangerous people who are actually absorbing what he's saying and and they feel emboldened. It justifies and mainstreams their point of view. Is this going to turn into something real serious? Only if we let it. I fucking, oh my God. I, there's no stopping this. I don't know. Other than like him being broken out on the street, there's no stopping this train. It has left the station. This ends badly somehow. He's going to be in the middle of the street, jacking it in San Diego where he's going to be broke and a bum. I don't know where this is going, but it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty. He has lost a significant chunk of his wealth after several uh, deals uh, fell, for, fell through for him. Adidas apparently was one of them. I can't keep up with the celebrity news. As far as I know, wasn't he... Uh, wasn't he like financing an album because nobody would nobody would give him money to make an album a few years ago? How did he get to be a billionaire? I and the Kardashians seem to have some based takes. Fucking Kim is all about the prison justice reform, so I'll take it.
Now, don't ask Sparkles about uh, Chris Jenner, though. Kanye tells Howard Stern to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Apparently, this happened on one of the one of the like this dude's a Nazi apologist. Who's this guy? I, I, I saw Lex Friedman. Lex Friedman. Lex Fred, Friedman. I saw uh, producer Dave watching some of this. Apparently Kanye West dissed Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Nobody wants to kiss your dick, so shut the fuck up. I said, and by the way, I'm a tag. I'm sure plenty of people want to kiss Howard's dick. I'm just saying, Kanye. Right now, it seems like nobody wants to kiss your dick. And uh, you're kind of salty about it. Point, Howard Stern. Nobody wants to kiss your dick, so shut the fuck up. I said, and by the way, I'm antagonizing you, Howard Stern. I used to be a fan of you. Yeah, me too. Yeah, not I'm still not, a fan. Not, sometimes not, not, now you're just doing clickbait like everybody else. Now you're just a sad old man, Howard. All right. Now Howard Stern, this is the first time. Oh, Kanye, Kanye. If there's anybody who's sad around here, it is you. And yeah, to an extent, Howard is kind of a sad old man. But, like, nowhere near as sad as you need to learn to feel embarrassment. Also, Howard, at this point in time, has fuck you money. So, if Howard wants to be a sad old man with some cringe takes and some base takes, he can totally do that. Howard's kind of a mixed bag. And, like, he's, he, I think he's been coasting with his content. I don't, I, I don't ever think he was all that revolutionary to begin with. But Howard's got fuck you money, and Howard can do what the fuck he wants to do. Everybody else. Now you're just a sad old man, Howard. All right. Now, Howard Stern, this is the first time anyone's said your name in years. Your own family doesn't say your name unless they're calling to get their bills paid. <laughs> you're going hard. <laughs> uh, hey, 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 how often does Kim call you for some alimony? For some child support, Kanye. Jesus fucking Christ. Right-wingers have zero self-awareness. Uh, I'm just uh, see, that's beautiful right there. That's much better than calling Jewish media. Call, go after individuals. Okay, go so, after individuals. And if you don't you, talk I, shit about me, talk shit about me. This is great. Talk shit about me. Oh, he's almost 69? He better make a big deal of him being 69. You live in sexual anarchy. I used to pay for satellite radio. That's how, that is how much I love talk radio. I mean, if if you guys can't tell that I've been tempered in talk radio. I mean, my life has just been like a leading up to doing this kind of a show. It's what I've always wanted, but I've always, I've always known I'm too radical to get a terrestrial radio show. Maybe, maybe I would take a deal with XM or Sirius or whatever the fuck. But uh, look at Howard. Howard's just been cruising. He's got fuck you money. He don't have to do anything. I mean, his clips are on YouTube and shit. You can go get you a dose of Howard if you want to. I don't... Did I leave off? I don't even have an animal video. What is wrong with me? I'm such a letdown, guys. I'm sorry for letting you down. Quite the loser. Uh, let me find video. Uh, Let's do a bird. We're going to watch a bird get fed. Yay, birds. Oh, you think I'm fucking great? Oh, thank you, Tones. I think you're fucking great. I appreciate you guys so much. I like, I could, 
So, like, I have the talent to to be a radio host, but am I willing to compromise what I'm what I'm what I'm going to say on the air? And the answer is no. Ah, uh, Bisky. I always try to end with an animal video. It's Israel. I don't know if I even shouted you out tonight. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, it's laying eggs. Get Elon at the end. What? What are you saying yes to? I'm very confused. And no. No, Elon. Bad. Oh, I'm glad you I'm glad you like the Halloween theme. I try to always uh throw up new themes. It's gonna be a lot harder when I launch the new graphics. Uh not as much space to work with. We will Oh we even see him hatching everything. This is, we're up to day 38. Oh, their little mouths are ugly. I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess they gotta look like that. No offense about what? Why am I changing my graphics or why fuck Elon Musk? Oh, they're getting so big. They still got weird looking mouths. Oh, they're just wide open. Okay. I see. They're not they're not weird looking mouths. They're just they're wide open wanting fucking food anytime mama mama bird comes back. I see. I was like, why do their mouths look so weird? Just cause they're fucking gaping open, like, please put something in me. Why this video? Oh, I just always do I always do a uh animal video at the end of the show. It may be something cuddly. It may be it may be a, a, an animal that you wouldn't want to cuddle with. It may be a bird. Usually, usually it's going to be you know a cuddly kind of animal. Might be a big cat though. Oh, your brother's an animal. What kind of an animal is he? Is he, is he a party animal? Is he a sexual animal? You live in sexual anarchy. Oh, that's weird. That don't don't tell me about your brother's sexual proclivities. They have a pretty mouth. I wouldn't say that when they're when they are gaping open. They're not exactly pretty. But I guess I understand it. It's a food delivery mechanism. It's not about the aesthetics. It's about being able to deliver nutritious. Uh, Worms to the birds. What was it, Dr. Oz? At nutritious chicken? Oh my, what? I'm going to have to go back and listen to that. What in the fuck did Dr. Oz say? Worried about a woman, and he, like, he, he referred to it like a, a specific woman that he had met. And wanted, to, wanted her to have nutritious chicken. And I was like, well, why, why didn't you go to the Wegmans and buy her some nutritious chicken? Come on. <laughs> oh, did, I didn't dream that, right? That happened. That was a thing. Oh, it's Tuesday night. It's down ballot. That's what's going on. I was like, do I need to stall for time until Echoplex comes on? No, I don't. I don't know what night it is. If you're watching on Twitch, we're going to go say hey to producer Dave. God, we might even be into local love already. No, no, no. It's down ballot. It's down ballot. If you are watching on Twitch, you are heading over to Echoplex Media. They are good people. Go ahead, light one up, tip one back. It's all right to have a little fun before you hit the sack. I'm Justin Freakin'. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Troll Patrol, live.